Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 150 of the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. We're brought to you by Black Belt Digital Marketing. Anything you need to build your business on or offline, that's website design, Google ads, graphic design, printing, we can absolutely help. Check us out at Black Belt Digital Marketing on Instagram or our website, bbdigitalmarketing.com. Right there on the homepage, you can request a free review of your online presence today. It's a really cool, like, comprehensive report about your business. Uh, we specialize mostly in local marketing, so getting you people in your backyard, but we can do anything. All right, my name is Milton Campus. I'm a black belt training out of South Florida. Got Christian behind the camera. Give him the woohoo. Hey. <laughs> so exciting. Hey. Bo's on vacation today. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, download, share, click that subscribe button. We appreciate all the support. Uh, I've been mentioning that if you listen to us on Google, you probably already know that everything's moved over to YouTube. So if you go to our YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com and then just Jiu-Jitsu Dummies, or you could do uh, forward slash at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. All of our podcasts are there. Actually, we're missing a few, and I'm working with uh, with YouTube and Google on uh, on getting those added. But no more Google Play, or at least no more podcasts on Google Play. Uh, joining us today are the founders of Raised by Lions Coffee, Brian, James, and Alex. We're going to bring them in in a few minutes. We got them on the we got them in the waiting room. What's up, guys? Give me just a couple Yo. of minutes. We're going to do some shout outs here to our sponsors, and then we'll bring you guys back in. Uh, we are also brought to you by academysafe.org. Academy Safe is a nonprofit whose mission is to help clean up the martial arts by advocating for background checks and U.S. Center for Safe Sports certifications for all coaches and staff members of, at every martial arts academy throughout the United States. I'm the founder and executive director of Academy Safe, along with Rob Ingram, who is the founder of McDojo Life. He is our executive VP, and together we're going to completely change the way people find and vet martial arts academies. Uh, we're going to give you a website registry listing academies that are certified by us. And they're going to, there are eight criteria that they have to fill. You can go to academysafe.org and look at that criteria. Uh, our new website is launching soon. So it'll be a little bit more comprehensive, probably in the next two weeks, you'll see everything, including being able to sign up. Uh, there are other things like CPR, first aid, defibrillator, defibrillator certification, um, do you have security cameras? And we're going to do a belt of lineage check, which obviously, if you know anything about McDojo Life and, and Rob Ingram, he's been doing that for well over a decade, right? Outing fake black belts and, and you know, doing reports after something bad has happened. But we want to do, uh, this is a preemptive strike. We want to make sure that we're keeping the creepers out of the academies by doing the background check and doing the, the safe sport certifications, which if you've done the safe sport or you know about it, it's not only going to teach you what to watch out for. It's like kind of like for parents, they could do it as well where they're kind of keeping an eye on like what's going on. Why is that coach, you know, always got his hand on that kid's back or what's the relationship between this 50 year old and this, you know, eight, nine, 12 year old. So uh, it really kind of gets it on your radar of what to look out for. So the academies are going to be responsible for the cost of their own background checks through the site and any of the certifications. We aren't charging a lot for the certification. So we are actually looking for the community's help, right? We have a GoFundMe running. Again, you can go to academysafe.org. You can donate via the GoFundMe or via PayPal. You can set up recurring donations. Uh, both links are right there on the site. Um, we'd love for everyone to donate. Obviously, that would be great, um, even if it's something small. But absolutely, at least share it, please. I know this is like a weird time. The hurricanes just hit. There's so much going on in the world. But if you share it, you know, definitely people who want to help us out. Uh, the website should be launched and beta tested fully by the end of October. So this we're recording on the 11th. Uh, so we should be up and running fully for anyone to go to the site and sign up by the end of October. All right, so stay tuned. If you want to be one of the first academies to be listed, join our waiting list on academysafe.org where you can submit your academy's information and keep up with the announcements and updates uh, on the full website launch. All right. Uh, so thank you to our friends over at Flow and Roll as well. Hands down the best custom gear and no gear in the business. You can visit them on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll. Check out their custom designs they've created for academies and, and competitors. I never say competitors, right? They'll actually just do your kit. If you want to do uh, something for an event that's coming up and you've got some sponsors, they'll actually just do a kit for, you know, one rash guard and one pair of shorts, right? So you can actually uh, do it for your academy or for your competitors across the country. You visit their website at flowenroll.com. You get 20% off with code JJD. Now that's 20% off anything you buy from the website, custom gear and their pre-order program. That stuff is different. Uh, gym owners, ask them about that pre-order program, right? They do something really cool where they'll list, show all of your products on their site for your students to buy. You don't have to lay out much money, just enough to cover the design. Your students buy from the website. He ships it directly to them, and you don't have to lay out all that money that people usually lay out for all of their geese 
rash guards, nogi shorts, all that stuff, right? You'll just have it on the site, ready to order, right? You can check them out at flowenroll.com or you can just email them at flowenroll at gmail.com to find out more about that either of those programs for competitors or academy owners. Last but not not least is Leo Optics. Let's put them on. I wore, I wore these today. I, I can't remember the name. I feel so bad. Can't remember the name. These are the these are brown, and right they have the little stripe here. They have a little uh, red for the black belts. Right, that looks pretty close to it. These are all brown. I love these. All right, Leo Optics. Shout out to um, to the crew over at Leo Optics, the go to brand for sunglasses and apparel featuring their unique bamboo sunglasses. That's what I'm wearing. Born in South Cal uh, Southern California, their products embody the BJJ lifestyle. Visit LeoOptics.com and use code JJD to get 10% off your order. So love these. And uh, Kristen was showing it there on the screen. Very cool. All right. Love that stripe. I had the stripe before I was a black belt. They sent them to me like that. I didn't. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's bring the crew in. Welcome. This yeah. is the crew from Raised by Lions. Raised by Lions yeah, Coffee. Boy. Welcome, guys. So we've got Brian in the top corner. We've got Alex right next to him. The, they're divided by that big hole in the wall in the back there. And then, <laughs> uh, then we got James there on the bottom. Welcome, gentlemen. How you doing? Good, How's man. Going? How you doing? Let's, uh, let's let you give everybody a proper introduction. Go ahead, and, and we'll start with Brian. Name, rank, and serial number. Yeah. So I'm Brian. Uh, this is my coach. I've been with him for about 13 or 14 years now. Uh, so his, he's got a black belt under Otavio Souza. And, uh, so, he, so Otavio is like my grandpa and he's like my papa. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, you know the, the gray in the beard makes it look like it should be the other way around. Are you well, like actually, me? Like, my, I was, I'm older than, than most of my coaches. Yeah. Is that to say, are you, are you older than your coach there? Yep. Yep. He's definitely older. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean to call you out, but I got that same gray in here. You know, uh, I got yeah, it. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, I'm proud. I'm proud old guy jujitsu. Yes, good. man. Yeah. <laughs> and Alex, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I am a second degree black belt. And um, yeah. Wait, what else was I, was I supposed to? I I jokingly throw in the serial number. Right? Isn't that a military uh, thing? Okay. Name, rank, and serial number. <laughs> um and, and and positions in the company brian you're are you guys just all partners or is there a hierarchy here that we should know about no we're, we're equal partners equal yep. partners okay yeah and then we got james at the bottom here go ahead james introduce yourself uh name is james kim uh purple belt under uh professor okay. alex de and professor brian I didn't oh, know. Nice. I didn't know he was a purple belt Christian. Turn that. Turn that screen off. Let's, let's <laughs> hey, knock him out. We'll just hey. talk to the black belts. <laughs> yeah, let's get that's that's more like it. That's more like it. Let's get the purple belt out. Now, welcome guys. I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, just so that everybody knows, you guys were supposed to be right here next to me. You were going to fly into Florida, into South Florida, and lo and behold, Hurricane Milton uh, closed down the airports down here. Uh, we were just talking before. Right? We didn't really get hit by much. Heat. Uh, not in South Florida, we didn't get hit by anything, but uh, I guess uh, last minute they they let you know that they were closing down the or uh, or canceling your flights. Yep. That's, uh, yeah, we had uh, we actually had a bunch of stuff going on. We have a tournament for the kids this weekend. Yeah, and I, I was pretty worried about just the delays and maybe not making it to the tournament back yeah. on Sunday. Uh, yeah. And then. You know, there was a huge, when they showed it on the map, that hurricane was like moving through your whole state. Yeah. But that's what it showed it. I mean, so, yeah, the storm covered a, a pretty good part of the state. Yeah. I mean, I, th that the outer bands, you know, we we get whipped by that a little bit. Uh, my folks live a little bit further north than me. And um, they got they were in that, like, let's call it tornado alley of, of tornadoes that were going on. So um it was kind of scary I, that i was worried about that and had the news on all day but you know it was a normal though those were normal work days for me but not everything was kind of the same even though a lot was uh a, a lot of businesses the schools closed down down here like they say out of an abundance of caution but also to let staff members get prepared you know some people do maybe live a little further north and they're going to be closer to that stuff and you got to give them an opportunity to prepare so so what, let, 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 me, let me i got a question now the way that you said that did they cancel the flights or did you guys cancel? No, they, they canceled it. Oh, uh, okay. They the way that Alex yeah. just said that, he's just like, oh, we he, were a little worried, worried about the delay. He was worried. Oh, uh, okay. No, he was, initially he was worried because I was like, let's still go. Like, if if if, if the, they're going to fly, like, why would yeah. we, you know, they're going to they're gonna kill a bunch of people. 
So, uh, so he was, <laughs> yeah, his main worry was if, right if we get center. delayed because we're going to be parking planes different places. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they valid. Uh, Actually, valid. I said that before. Valid. I thought that that was part of why they closed down because a lot of times they'll yeah. just say, okay, let's fly those planes to West Palm Beach and to yep. the, uh, Fort Lauderdale and Miami. We got to park them. That causes problems. That causes delays. So it made a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, they were. I mean, they hyped this up to be like the, the you know worse than Katrina. Uh, and it turned yeah. out it really wasn't that bad, the hurricane itself, but the tornadoes that it caused, I think, is, is what we're finding out is where the real damage came from now. Yeah. Yeah. When, when it was coming up on my news feed, they made it seem like it was the craziest yeah, of like, all time. Like, it was going to wipe us out. Yeah. yeah. How about for you guys? How is it over there? That's up. Uh, we were. I'm watching the same news. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, that's like the same thing. I'm watching the Weather Channel and stuff like that. And it's just like be prepared. Like basically, they you know they said like Tampa Bay. This was coming right at Tampa Bay, and like everything along the bay was going to be wiped out. You know, if it was you're in a house and you're at that essentially close to sea level, like with a nine to fifteen foot sea rise, yeah, you're you're going to be underwater. The only thing that's you're yeah. going to be safe is if you're in a high rise and you're further up, but still your building's going to be flooded. How do you get out? Things like that. So um, it was that was it was all mandatory evacu evacuations around that area. But inland was is what wound up getting the worst part of it. And I think we're finding out like, OK, so that's the West Coast. Now it went and hit the East Coast as it as it moves over Florida. And again, with the tornadoes and the storm surge, they had more damage, I think in the middle to the east coast of Florida. Don't quote me, I might not be 100% right, but what I'm hearing is that it's, it was worse there uh, when they expected it to, you know, Tampa to basically get wiped out. Dang. Yeah, yeah, we're bummed, man. We had a bunch of stuff planned. We had a, a couple of cool dinners planned. So, you know, we'll, we'll get out there though. We'll, well, you guys are welcome here. And he's obviously, you know, you know uh, if you guys want to do another podcast, I think, uh, Brian, we were already talking about um, what days I think we were talking about in January would probably be Maybe ideal like the, after the like holidays. Third week. Oh, yeah, yeah, to come yeah. back again. So, yeah, I'd love to have you guys down here. Alex, I, I moved from New York. I came here to work for six months, and it's 26 years later. So I love South Florida. Yeah, this is an amazing nice. place. There's so much fun stuff to do here. Um, a lot of times people, when they fly in, when, when my friends come down, they forget that I live here. They're on vacation, and I live here. So I'm like, I still have to work. <laughs> I'll see you on Friday night, Saturday, but I still have to work, you know? This is, a, this yeah. is, this is life. It just happens to be, you know. When you look out the window, you're seeing palm trees and, and you know, and girls in bikinis as opposed nice. to, uh, you know, anything else. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's talk about how did you guys all meet? So you guys all train as you're at a Gracie Baja, correct? Yep. Yep. So, so is, James and I have known each other for probably almost 20 years or so. We used to work together back in the, the uh, heyday of the, the mortgage crisis, mm. um, or actually before that. And uh, we, you know, we stayed in touch, friends, you know, Alex and I have been training, he's been my coach for several years. Um, and, uh, you know, sort of, you know, you know, reconnected with James, you know, brought him in, he, he'd always wanted to train. And I'll let him talk a little bit about his, his, his lifestyle prior to training and how, you know, how it's changed him a lot. And, you know, and then together, you know, the story about the coffee thing, how it all sort of connects is, uh, you know, Alex was, <laughs> was, was dating this, this one girl that was a coffee nerd. And, he always he always teases me that he's you know he's been schooling me on coffee, which is it's true. Um, but if it wasn't for that that one girl who he was dating who who uh, who's a coffee nerd that really kind of kind of brought him up on game. <laughs> yeah. And so like you know we would on on Fridays we would all sort of go out and you know like check out different coffee places, and uh, and then we we just sort of you know like little by little we're like hey let's just jokingly we were talking about like let's open up a spot. You know, meaning a store because we have a store as well. So we're at the roasting house right now, where we do a roasting and a cold brew. Um, so we, you know, I, I kind of was passively looking, and we found a spot, and uh, you know, we we just put an offer into the to the lease, and and they accepted, and it was like just like it was like from zero to one hundred. So it's kind of crazy how that all happened. Um, but that that's sort of in a nutshell, like the the genesis of this. It's been a couple of years. So was it the, was it an actual like coffee house before you started? doing like the cold brew and you're saying the roasting, you're in the, the roasting facility. Like what, does that have to come first or does that come along with it? Is that all one thing from the start or did you, were you serving coffee and then like, then you started creating your own brand? Yeah, we actually started with the, with the coffee house. Cause we, we just wanted a coffee shop. Like he was saying, we yeah. used to go all over the place driving like 20 minutes here to get good coffee. And then 20 minutes there to like get good food. 
And uh, there was a couple couple coffee spots that had food and coffee. And then, you know, for us, it was like, we need a spot where we can go. Like, we're always driving 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. Like, why don't we just have our own spot? So we started with that. And then uh, as the coffee shops started doing well, uh, at about, what, the six month to year mark? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, it, coffee expo. Yeah, it only made sense for us to kind of roast our own beans because prior to that, we were sourcing our beans from a Hidden House, this other co- coffee place that that roasts and everything. Okay. One of our friends owned. Uh, but as far as uh, you know, we're really passionate about everything we do. So if you're gonna have a coffee house, the next step is like roasting your own coffee. So how how quickly did the roasting come come after you purchased the uh, the coffee shop? Was it yes, quick? Yes, it came out. Was it quick though? Uh, was, it, was about, you... it was about, I would say about probably about a year. So you know, after the, the, the shop had got its feet under uh, under itself, you know, it was doing well, it was profitable. Um, we, we went to a coffee expo and we were, we were like, at first it was a bit, you know, daunting. It's like, man, you have to buy all these big machines and you don't even know how to work them and all this stuff. But when we went to that coffee expo, like it really gave us a lot of confidence. We, we you know, we went there, we were shopping machines and just asking a bunch of questions, doing Intel. And then when we got back, you know, we started digging and, you know, we, we found a couple of machines uh, from an auction company and we got a really good deal. Uh, and we got like the the Mercedes of the machines that we have a lowering. So it's it's a, like a convection, like a hybrid. It's it's not the old drum roaster that, you know, kind of you have to be very, there's a lot of variables. So anyway, so long story short, we got we got all this cool machinery. And then from there, we got the warehouse. And again, this is probably like just after the year mark of the store being on its own, like meaning doing well, fully staffed. You know, it's making money. And so now, like, we're in this new venture where, you know, we're furthering the brand. So it's it's not just branding, you know, the coffee shop as being a specialty, you know, coffee shop where you can find the best coffee and, and good eats. But now it's like now we're 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 going to create an online presence and really try to focus on outreach uh, of the brand in general and uh, and then really become like, a you know, a good specialty roaster. And so that that was kind of like the next step of the trajectory for us. Where did the name raise by lines? I could imagine that it has something to do with jujitsu, but I'll let you guys answer. Where did the name come from? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we we get that question all the time. I mean, obviously, it's a super cool name nowadays. You know, in the specialty coffee world, you have to have a cool name, right? There's got to be something that is catchy that people remember. And so for us, like we kicked around a bunch of ideas. Um, you know, like collectively, we you know all sort of came up with the idea. And what it what it means for us in the crest, because that's one of the main questions we get is like, what does that crest mean? You know, obviously this is this crest with the lion and the and the you know the crown is is something that's used a lot in European countries and and there's there's a lot of general history behind that crest and what it means for for countries. So what we did is we created our own sort of like uh, meaning for it. And so like the way that we you know like live our lives, like it, this is not just like a hobby we do like with jujitsu, like it's our lifestyle. It's integrated in everything we do. So like from the way we raise our kids to our values to like everything about the way we view ourselves and, you know, um, just as people, as martial artists, like we want to that, that like that's what the brand is sort of comprised of all those elements. And uh, and and really, you know, like James is a father. He's got two kids. You know, Alex is someday going to be a father. I have, you know, two kids, 19, and 21 years old. And so like, you know, really the the meaning behind the name is 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 all those things encompassed into one. And, uh, and, and it's really meaningful for us. And so we, as we continue the brand and, and grow the brand, we want to make sure that that really stays behind it. And so that, that's kind of like in a nutshell, you know, what, what that's all about. Very, but I, as far as the name, uh, did you say Maris, Marisol dropped it? Uh, well, I think like officially the name, I think my wife, we were just kicking around names at the house and we had come up with some goofy ass names, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had some inspirations at yeah. first because there was a, there was a couple uh, shops that one that we thought was cool. It's called the boy and the bear. It's out here in, um, out here in SoCal. So we're like, we wanted a name that was cool, obviously. Right. And then we also wanted a name that, uh, that was me. Yeah. Meaningful for us. Yeah. Or just kind of like, it was like dudes, coffee shops, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so there was the boy and the bear. That was kind of cool. There was lion and the lamb. And then there was raised by wolves in, uh, in San, in San Diego. Diego. So, yeah. so those were floating around for a while. And then Brian came up with roasters, roosters. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're like, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you know what, though? Go. Sometimes, no. like, the, the craziest names, I've helped people name businesses, and I've named my own. Sometimes, like, 
the odd name becomes the inspiration for the one that you choose, right? You know, it's like, you know, spitballing, right. you're throwing ideas around. The podcast, I had originally, it was going to be Jiu-Jitsu Idiots. And then it was just like, <laughs> that's a little too strong. And then it was just like, oh, dummies in the play on the fact that Jiu-Jitsu Dummies, grappling dummies, right? Like, you know, you could say that's my Jiu-Jitsu yeah, yeah. Dummy, right? That's my Uki or whatever, right, we say. So the double meaning, and then it was just like at the marketing guy and me was like, oh, for SEO purposes, if somebody's looking for a Jiu-Jitsu Dummy and they type that in, the podcast might come up and now I get somebody that doesn't even you know, you know, wasn't even looking for the podcast. So like that's how it came it came about. But it's mm -hmm. the craziest ideas or the weirdest ones or like the funniest or the one I'm obviously not gonna do that becomes the inspiration for the uh for the name. Yeah. So that's uh, that's how it happens a lot of times. Yeah, for sure. We we were we were trying to like really come up with a cool one. Yeah. And then, then I just actually remember now now the, the more, now that you're bringing it up or that we're talking about it. I remember him sending a text in the morning and it said like, and I opened the text and it was like, raised by Lions Coffee. And then I was like, dang, that's, that's it, it right, there. right away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get James and in here. We don't want to, we don't want to leave James out. Let's get James on screen. He, oh, he was yeah, like, no, hey guys, no, I'm, 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 a just good, over I'm a good listener. No, no, okay. that's good, man. That's good. So, so who goes to who with the idea first though? Did I, did I ask that before? I know you guys said you guys came together and did this, but or we were talking about hierarchy. Um, yeah. Who, who comes, who, straight up was just like let's open a coffee shop first who's the who's the one with the idea i think it was just kind of honestly it was like yeah. all of us it was just collective um yeah like, hold on let james oh, answer yeah. go ahead, go ahead. on that was always jumping in yeah <laughs> no no uh, he's like it was all my it was all my idea you can cut those other two guys off cut that screen off it was all me <laughs> yeah no brian's a uh, hundred percent correct it was it was all collective and it, it and it was a uh, just a culmination of us like they said going to coffee shops every friday and often finding things that we felt were lacking or that we didn't, we felt that just, it wasn't good enough, you know, and us, we're all business owners in our own right. So we just thought, Hey, let's create our own. And that, like Alex said, let's create a place where we can go and hang out. And, um, that we feel is, you know, um, uh, up to par, so to speak mm -hmm. with where specialty coffee is now, because it's pretty much the golden age of coffee and uh everywhere you go in socal you're, you're seeing cool new things from every coffee shop yeah so we, we wanted to make our mark what other businesses are you involved with you got do you guys own you do you each own your other businesses and or uh, an academy uh we we all own our own businesses alex uh owns the academy uh brian uh has his own real estate company his uh, general contracting company he runs a successful mortgage business uh, I myself have uh, some boba shops and a few other uh, projects going on. Did you have so, that before the coffee shops or did you have experience kind of in this realm of essentially what's considered like food and beverage, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, it was before the coffee shops. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, so you came into it with a little of experience in running a shop already. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, I had a little bit of experience and, um, you know, I, I try to use that experience as much as possible for the day-to-day -day operations of our brick and mortar shop right now. So oftentimes you'll find me there uh, throughout the day. I see the lights like in the back, like, is that for effect because of the podcast or is that something that has to be on? Like I see the lights changing on, on, on something behind you. No, is that we, just, we just a club? Keep it vibey. Yeah. We just keep it vibey in here. Is this you just club? Okay. All right. Yeah, you know what I was like, what's going on? Are, are the beans <laughs> passing by some lights that make them magical or something? What's going on? That looks cool. Yeah. You know, we, we don't hold back on aesthetics. Like with the store, you know, we have it dialed in like very beautifully. And same thing with the warehouse. When we first, you know, did the warehouse, it was just a vanilla shell, like just beige walls and all that stuff. And, and you know, we, we got together and we're like, you know what? Like, we're going to make this place look super sick. So, the warehouse in the back where James is at right now, because he's just like 20 feet behind us. It's all black in there. And we put these lights up there for the vibes, you know, to, to match the sort of industrial tanks and the roasting. And then in the front of the house, we have, you know, obviously in our little fireplace here with our metal logo on the wall. And uh, and then the kitchen, it's all sort of vibed out, you know, like, you know, like uh, bright colors with like a dark background. So, yeah, we that, that's one of the things that we wanted to do is, is is kind of express ourselves in like the way that we could sort of show off like you know, really what the brand's about. And, you know, that's the, the fun part about this too. So let me, let, let me give the proper shout out. Uh, give me one second. Let me give the proper shout out to Daniel, uh, Daniel Silva. I don't know if he trains with you guys. Some of the questions that came in look like they, they probably know you guys. It asks about why raised by lions. And then he added, don't some lions eat their young. 
<laughs> with, <laughs> with, with a little, you know, joking face, a little laughing face and some fire. So I don't, do you guys know uh, Daniel? Yeah, I, I know him. Uh, yeah. he I train, know him he train, I'm assuming, I, I assumed he trained with you guys. But go ahead, Alex. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, you got So I was going to elaborate on, because uh, it looks like you were interested in, in James owning uh, uh, the boba shops before we got into coffee. Yeah, yeah. And actually, so for a while, I, I, I really wanted a, that was always one of my dreams just to have like a, either a coffee shop or a little, a little mini restaurant. And so I would always actually pick James, James's brain because he also owned a couple of couple restaurants about about how that goes, what the profit margins look like, that whole process. And then he opened up Boba Shops. And to me, Boba Shops was very uh, similar to probably what the coffee margins would look like. So uh, every few months, I don't know if you remember this, James, because actually James was a big reason why we ended up opening up the coffee shop. We, we, I don't know if we would have done it so quickly unless James had all the background uh, in his other two Boba Shop stores. Uh, but all, all to say, I, I started, I saw his store started doing well. And then I, I kept probing him. I'm like, hey, so, so what is the, you know, how, how many staff members you have? What, what does that whole lease look like? Uh, what, what are your margins like? And then eventually the, the, the better he got, like the better his responses were. Uh, as far as how his business were doing, uh, eventually I was like, well, what do you think about coffee? Like, shouldn't it be the same Sh or shouldn't it be very similar? And can't we replicate uh, as far as a business model? Can't we replicate that for coffee? And then he's like, you I, I remember, I don't know if you remember this, James. Do, do you remember all this? I do. I, I do remember. I remember like, why is he asking me all these questions? Like, I, I couldn't figure out, like, this son like, of a really bitch is going to open up a boba shop. He's going to open up a boba <laughs> shop right next to mine. Yeah. It's like it's like a, a student. It's like a student starting a jujitsu academy across the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I, you know, I'm like, we have a resource right here. One, one of our yeah. best friends, you know, he's in it, and then we have a. There's a passion that I have for coffee, and then there's a passion that we all have for coffee. So it's like, let, let let's go, you know, because you don't want to just jump in and something you have no like uh experience in or you know those are the social... most fun though those are the fun ones yeah. yes <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, you no, be... no clue what i'm doing you want to be yep. somewhat calculated as yeah. well you know so i was like you know we got to leverage everything we have between our between our group and you know james just having that experience in boba i think really helped us like have like that faith and jumping in coffee have you guys seen um i'm sure everybody probably sees Robbie D'Onofrio in his videos. Do you know, do you guys know that name? Right. Robbie D'Onofrio. So. You guys should follow him. He opened up a coffee shop attached to his jujitsu Academy. Oh yeah. 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 Right? yeah, yeah. yeah that guy. Right. So, um, I'm, again, that's, I want to give credit. It, it was on my list, but it was also a question that came in. So, um, it, so, uh, Gary DiPerio, he was asking, he oh, said, yeah. professors and coach, I guess so I'm guessing he probably works with you or trains with you as well. Um, yeah. would, would you guys in the future like to incorporate RBL along with a uh, Gracie Baja? Um, and then he, he referenced Robbie as well. Cause Robbie did go from like, I believe he's got multiple locations and I believe that he's, when he's giving his student count, I think when he's giving his student count, he's talking about all his academies, but he went from some like 70 students to like 300 or something. Maybe that's one Academy, but like yeah. it went, it was just off the charts and uh, you know, I interviewed him. So if you go, you can go back and hear a lot about what he was talking about. And he was even going to be doing like a free seminar to show other academy owners. Like he said, I'm going to do it for free uh, and just give out that information. And I said, hey, why don't you try to do like, why wouldn't you try to do like franchise the idea or something or, you know, call that shop something specific. Anyway, he was uh, follow him. He talks about it a lot. You can see some of the videos that, that he has out. But I mean, he put it right next to his, you know, it's attached to his store. There's a doorway that just goes right through. There's a window so you can get a coffee, watch jujitsu. You could just be somebody who wants coffee and go in and out and maybe get a sandwich. And then you can go, um, you know, drop off your kid and just come walk over. And like, I think he said, like, there's no seating, I think, in the academy area anymore. So like, if you do want to yeah, stay, yeah. you're sitting in the, in the coffee shop. So it was a great idea. It worked. Uh, so, uh, so Gary was asking, do you guys see something like that in the, in your future? Unlock the power of your online presence with Black Belt Digital Marketing. Their reputation management program ensures your Google business profile seen by more potential customers. Black Belt Digital Marketing is your full-service digital marketing agency specializing in local SEO and reputation management. Boost your business today. 
Visit bbdigitalmarketing.com. Your success is their priority. Mystery Morning Routine by Pro. <laughs> Special thank you to the crew over at Flow and Roll for all their support. Flow and Roll is renowned for their incredible nogi rash guards, shorts, and leggings. Flow and Roll has quickly become the premier custom apparel provider for academies big and small throughout the United States. Reach out today to discuss your custom order and ask about their incredible pre-order program. You can send an email to flowenroll at gmail.com or visit their Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll and shoot them a direct message. And yes, they can create an awesome custom gi for your academy as well. Visit flowenroll.com to check out their awesome designs. And remember, you'll get 20% off your purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. Yeah, so uh, we all train at Gracie Baja Guard Grove. So that, that's that's the school that I kind of, uh, uh, what you call it? We started from the ground up. Uh, and one of my vision was all, it was actually even 10 years ago. So we opened the school 10 years ago was to, was to have that, like actually a coffee shop inside, not a yeah. coffee shop per se, but maybe like this whole coffee set up yeah. and, uh, w- with the school. Cause obviously it's kind of symbiotic. You know, you have a lot of parents coming off of, a uh, a, a long day work. They're picking up their kids. They're going to go watch sure. the train, you know, what better way than to have a little, little coffee, you know, and watch your kids. So absolutely. Yeah. And now as the, as the coffee shop has developed and done well, and our, our school has been booming over the last like five years or so. Uh, how do you, how do you currently integrate that? What's, is there a tie? Uh, as far as what, what do you mean Like the Jiu Jitsu Academy and the brand are, are, do they overlap? Do you got like, you know, a fridge with the cold brews? Do you have, you know, are you serving coffee? Are you, are you cross marketing Gracie Baja with, with Raised by Lions? Uh, currently we're trying to RBL where we really want to, it's a brand, right? So we yeah. kind of want to uh, associate lifestyles with it. So anytime I do something at the school that that I feel reflects RBL, I, I always tag, you know, Raised by Lines Coffee. Uh, often if it's like kids training, you know, because yeah. we're the black belts kind of yeah. raising the little kids on the mats. And uh, I, I try to tag that as much as possible. But as far as if we do have a coffee shop in the, in the school as well, uh, the way I see it, it would be like Gracie Baja Garden Grove is our school. And then we just have this huge coffee shop just all along it where, where you can see into the school. Yeah, but man, the I, coffee shop will raise my lines, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it's like an, I don't want to say obvious progression because it's like, how do you yeah. progress jujitsu to coffee? But it's it's a great, it's just a great idea, right? You've got parents that are waiting. Sometimes they wait in their car. So giving them a place to sit down with their computer, have a coffee, give them Wi-Fi, they can grab some chips or a soda, sandwich, water, right? Just giving them that opportunity to really do it. I think everyone's tried to do something like that, but they put a little fridge or they put a soda machine. It's not the same. Right. Yeah. You know, a coffee shop where somebody can chill out. And like, for me, like, honestly, if I have my phone, I, I can work from, I can run my entire business, my marketing company from my phone. Everything. I've got my project management software on my phone in an app. I've got my entire team. I mean, it's not just me. So I'm like managing my team. I could go anywhere and do anything and and manage it from there. The only thing that I don't like to do for my phone is I don't like writing really long emails and I don't do this like this uh, speak to text or, you know, I don't do that a lot. So but like me having a place to sit down if I was, you know, if I was leaving my kids in an academy, which I don't have any little kids. Uh, if I had little kids and I was, uh, that's ideal for me. Like, I love that. I love to be able to like, hang out and, you know, okay, watch a class and, and, you know, uh, or, yeah. or show up early. Sometimes I'm on the road and I'm early and I'm like, if I go home, I'm going to go to sleep. Let me go right to the academy. I'll stretch a little bit, you know, I'll, I'll stretch a little more or, you know, just warm up a little bit. But like, that's ideal for me. Oh, I can sit and have a coffee real quick. I can get on my phone, do some work. I mean, I, I think a lot of people like that these days, you know, a lot of people carry their computers with them too. But for me, I just need yeah. my phone and I can sit down and work for hours and, and just if, if I have a yep. place to sit. And, and it also gets me out of the office or the home office. So that's a good thing. How long have you been training, Milton? Uh, last December was 10 years. I just got, uh, no, not last December. Uh, last June, not this last June. The June before last, uh, what is it? This June is 11. Is this 11 years? No, June was 10 years, I think. Okay. 
Got so, my bike. I got, so, I, okay, I got yeah, I got my bike about nine and a half years, and and June was ten. Got you. So just so you know like, you know back, like just ten years ago, one of the big challenges for for jujitsu was just to kind of get eyes on jujitsu to, to kind of tell you this is a, a martial art that you should be interested in or yeah, you, right, like educate kind of like a the the customer the customer base. Sure. Sure. So, and, and now obviously as it got more popular, that's less and less of a barrier to get people into jujitsu. But imagine like there's a cool coffee shop that you go to and you're not there for jujitsu, but you're just there for coffee. And you got a ton of people going to coffee. And, and you just go and sit and grab a coffee. And then while you're drinking coffee, you're looking into this yeah. this huge, awesome, beautiful school and people are training jujitsu. So I, I I think too like 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 you said it's a, it's an obvious progression uh for jujitsu to kind of have something like like a coffee shop attached to it. One, one of the uh, things Robbie said when I spoke to him when we had him on was every one of his baristas right every employee on the coffee side who may not actually be an employee of the jujitsu side right they're not a coach like he actually yeah. has employees but every one of them knows how to sell a membership. So if they were there, like somebody walked in and it was just the coffee shop, they would be like, what is, what's going on? Is this, a, what is going on on the other side here? Like they, that happens, right? So yeah. they were, oh, this is a jujitsu academy. Oh, here's a flyer, a business card. Like he, they have been taught how to not only serve the coffee, but to actually explain what's going on. It's a missed opportunity if somebody asks, what is that? And you don't explain it. You know, you're not going to necessarily exactly. sell everybody a membership, but if somebody, hey, well, this is, oh, yeah, this is a jiu-jitsu academy. Have you ever tried jiu-jitsu? Oh, you should check it out. We do a free class, right? They know the spiel, and I, that's part of what increases his membership is. Like, now he's got this thing that's bringing the, you know, the general public in off of the street and going, oh, shit, I didn't know this was here. Oh, wow, this is, oh, kind of cool. And then they get to watch a class, and they're having their coffee, and maybe they come back the next day or the next week. So that was a big part of what he did. It's just like, it's not just, you know, somebody sitting back there waiting for, coffee or you know waiting or you know uh serving coffee they're also you know capable of talking about the academy and even like signing someone up fully is what i remember him saying so that's so like, dope yeah, yeah so cool. like you have to think of that in, in that regard like it is a, if it's going to be right next to it it is this this crossover and they should be able to speak about that i i'm gonna guess that probably some of his students have become workers and like then they can really talk about yeah i train here just right and then you you relate your personal experience and then it goes a little bit further so um, that's always yeah. helpful. So just kind of think about Pretty that cool. when you're when you're doing it, you know, if and when. Do you, is it? Do you guys feel like a year, five years down the road? Like when do you think you would incorporate the two or or bring the two together? Probably within a year, to be honest. Yeah, probably with this year. That's that's our next big project. Yeah, yeah. It's something that we've been talking about for a while, and it's funny that I think James or Alex tagged me on that Rob's account, mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh wow, someone's actually doing this. This is pretty cool. Yeah, but he's like, not roasting sure, like, though. Like I don't, he's not doing the he's not doing the side that you're doing. So you kind of feel like right, you yeah. got between the boba shops and 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 roasting your own coffee, you've got a leg up on that situation because you're doing even oh, yeah. more. Right, you yeah. could, there's a lot more that you can sell and a lot more that you can do. Yeah, so we look at it like not only is it an amazing idea that someone's already executed, but uh, for us, it's actually like just a no brainer. Um, you know, so you know, Alex has been he's been sort of at a point now where the the school has grown to a point where he we just need more mat space. Yeah. So the conversation has been on the table about expanding, you know, here in Orange County, obviously, the, you know, the space is a lot more, you know, expensive per square foot. So, you know, and then availability is kind of a big thing. We're like in an urban area. So, you know, like that, that's always not always available. But, you know, now that we're, you know, we're, we're we've been talking about this idea. Um, that's something that, you know, we're, we're having to look for even a bigger space now where we could do something really cool, like put a big window, kind of like Rob's place. And, uh, and, you know, like the things that I was saying about like barriers, um, one is like the popularity, you know, has grown, but with the coffee shop, that being another thing that brings people in. But I think a lot of people also in general, when they think about maybe even trying jujitsu because maybe they heard it on Joe Rogan or whatever, th there's maybe some intimidation there and they think like it's just a bunch of brutes or whatever. And maybe they're afraid to go in and like ask a question where this would be, you know, somewhere where they would come and grab a coffee and kind of check it out and see like there's normal guys, there's bankers, there's lawyers or doctors, you know, there's just normal people that are very unassuming, but they're straight savages. And so I think sometimes if someone sees that, like maybe that gives them a little bit of inspiration to actually step on the mats and go, oh, you know, like these people look normal. They're not like these MMA looking guys with these, you know, jacked up ears and, and, um, and, and like th they look like fighters. Whereas like, there's a lot of dudes in jujitsu nowadays that, that they don't look like any, they just look like a normal random guy. 
and there's ultimate savage so that, that's another thing i think of when we, you know we think about the coffee shop and the school is just you're bringing these people in that are you know and the best people at jiu-jitsu are like the nerds you know like the ones that are just you know they're they're just uh book people and they they get a hold of jiu-jitsu and they're just you know just they're just uh savages so they could break it down and get super analytical with it it's like yeah uh, it's like a math problem to those guys i hate those guys <laughs> it's like they make it so easy like uh I, I, the, the ability to break moves down like that like i it takes me longer than that guy i i like i need to see it from five different angles and where did you put your sure. foot and how's your hand placed wait mm -hmm. show me your hand again oh but oh well, your hand is there your foot is there like i really have to study it to like you know it's i like my old school stuff because you know it's in, it's embedded in there already but when i'm learning something new i'm always like I'm the guy walking around the coach while he's showing the move to like to, I need to see where your foot is. Cause I need, I know that that's part of it. Where is your foot when your hand is here? Like I'm that guy to really take a closer look still. So. Same, same. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know you that you, I, go ahead. I was gonna say, you mentioned something about like the employees knowing how to sell and all that stuff. Like one of the things that we've always sort of, you know, as martial artists and like owning the store now, like that we've talked about is like, man, we wish you know, we had people that trained that work there too. And, you know, because of staffing is not always easy to find the right people. Um, you know, that would be another cool thing is that like, you know, if we had the school, inevitably there would be teenagers that would like go in there and graduate into working. You know, we, we have one guy that's, that's a boxer right now. He's one of our, he's our manager and uh, he, he's a little badass. So we always know like we can count on him if something happens. And, you know, one of the things that we have, we're not too far from railroad tracks. So one of the things that we have, have happen quite often actually is uh, homeless tend to wander into our store and then just sort of, you know, like passively camp in there so if one of us are not there like we know that you know his name's gus you know he, he'll jump in there and kind of handle it and then do what he needs to do or whatever to kind of graciously sort of escort them out but you know th that's a situation where there's there's some unknowns and you don't know how they're going to react so yeah. we want someone who knows how to defend themselves and keep themselves safe but also you know can be assertive enough to, and confident enough to handle the situation in the, in the right way so, yeah, that, that's one of our dreams is having like a full staff of jujitsuos, you know, just people that know how to, you know, that know how to protect themselves. So I, I want to move the conversation to I have this question. I don't know a lot about this, but I've seen this online so much. So while I have three Gracie Baja guys here, I want to ask this question. <laughs> oh man <laughs> uh, maybe let's get let's get uh i mean i'll let you guys whoever wants to answer it so why does gracie baja get such a bad rap about the court like the uniforms and cost and tell me why people are wrong tell the public why people are wrong but i mean right that's a, that's a thing i've never been to a gracie Baja, so i've never been like invited to one to wear it's just like okay there's a uniform for, like you have to rent a uniform or something like that to train you definitely can't wear anything <laughs> not uniform right so I'm always curious that 10 years in, I've never been to a Gracie Baja because I just never knew anybody or been invited. There is a brand new Gracie Baja, probably like two or three years old in my town now. So um, it, there is one here. But go ahead. And so whoever wants to answer that question, why do you guys get such a bad rap about the uniform and the cost and things like that? And before I answer that, where do you train? I train. I, <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> not, at, not at a Gracie Baja. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just actually moved schools. I, I'm training at Coral Springs Jiu Jitsu. So um, left my school that I was at for eight years. And I'll just say oh. part of the reason I left is why Academy Safe. If you heard my me talking about Academy Safe, mm, Academy yeah, Safe yeah. was born out of uh, multiple bad experiences. My gym was uh, a fight sports before it changed its name. I'm not going to say mm. that new name because. That's where the problems lie. But, uh, you know, so I saw the fight sports stuff kind of not from the inside. None of that stuff happened at my at my fight sports school. Uh, but That's I was at a fight sports when all that shit happened after Tex got poked. Tex Johnson got poked at the eye and then he outed these guys and then blah, blah, blah. All that shit happened. And there was that firestorm oh. around fight sports. So I saw it once. I told my coach, I said, I'm not coming back and giving my money to fight sports. I said, I'm sorry, I can't. And there were some personal things that were involved in there that had happened in my own family. So I was just like, I can't give you my money knowing this is going on and they're covering things up. He changed the name of the school, not just because of me. He thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, and then yeah. fast forward a few years, you know, that coach gets accused of some things here and there and, and some mm -hmm. impropriety. So I decided after eight years of training there that I had to leave. I, I can't be there to support that. And uh, I just, I recently went to a school. So I've been at that school for probably like less than two months now. So 
That's that's my experience. But I I started out of fight sports, and now I'm I'm at Coral Springs Jiu Jitsu. But I'm at a place where, believe it or not, there's like uh, at any given time. I mean, like I li- on on a Monday, there's like ten black belts on the mat, and I've never experienced that before. You know, that's there's so cool. wow. it's like I would you know like. I'm 51 now and I'm like, I was be like the guy that's been on the mat the longest. And I started training when I was 41. So it was like every, you know, the schools that I've been to, you know, I was the head white belt. Like I was the first white belt and or first one, the blue belt. So like, I've always been at the, the higher end at the hierarchy, even if I was a lower belt and then yeah. you know, getting my black belt at the school, I would always wonder why like black belts got their black belts and left. And it yeah. was because the longer you were there, you kind of started to hear the rumors of what the coach was doing mm. and people would just leave. And now it makes sense. And now I see some of those black belts and they're like, oh, you, you found out, huh? And they left. <laughs> the, the difference is that I, because I had this platform, I kicked up a lot of dust behind me and I, I made a stink about it. Um, mm. I have nothing to lose. I'm 51. What the fuck are you going to do to me? Like, you know, yeah, for sure. like, um, you know, a lot of younger people don't like to say anything because it's just like, oh, you know, I got to get my belt from him. He's going to promote me. What do I do? Right. I got to start over someplace else. I was like, give me my, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? He's, he's hitting yeah. on, he's hitting on, imagine just for a second, Brian, imagine Alex was hitting on your wife. What? Imagine he was hitting, getting, sliding into your wife's DMs. Right. <laughs> Everybody that oh, I say oh, that to, oh. everyone that I've ever said that to goes, I kill him. I yeah, kill him. Yeah. I go in there with a bat and I break his legs. or I kill him. Do you guys remember the Popovich? You know what happened yeah. with Pablo Popovich down here? That UFC fighter came, like Popovich was banging this UFC fighter's wife, and the the UFC yeah. fighter went there with a gun, got arrested and yep. deported. Yeah, that's I what happens that. when you hit on your students' wives or have affairs with really? your students' wives. So let, I'll, I'll leave that little nugget there. That's what was going on in my old gym, and I decided to leave. But that's where Academy Safe was born from. That like again. Yeah. I got to deal with your improprieties, like other people's bullshit and defend where I'm training again. Yeah. I said, I'm out. And then I got, I got angry enough that I wanted to do something about it. And then I got with Rob at McDojo and we started Academy safe, but um, yeah. I'm sorry. I got away from the question that I actually, but, or <laughs> I was asking no, you, about, no, no. Oh, you see what you did. You tried to get away from the answer. <laughs> Gracie Baja. I see what you did. Where do you train Milton? <laughs> I'm sorry. I get a little, yeah, I get cool. a little passionate about that because I'm, I'm angry about it. I'm bitter. I'm bitter that I got to yeah. fucking move again. But I did go to a gym that's got like a lot of law enforcement guys and a lot of black belts. And I've mm-hmm. been saying to people, I'm like, ah, this is, I've been at a, an academy for so long. I didn't realize that, wow, there's these other academies or the, the people that train at these academies, this, these are marks of good academy. When you have a lot of law enforcement guys who really know the dirt yes. and, you know, like, or know mm-hmm. if there's dirt or if you're, you know, if you're, if you're a scumbag uh, or can weed it, like, like they can sniff it out. Uh, and then there's that many black belts. There's a reason. And the guy that recruited me there was somebody who's on the same path as me. We've both been training for 10 years. We were actually, at, uh, we met at a, at a, a tournament, a new breed as white belts. And he was after me forever to come train it. And I finally, after when I was leaving and looking for a school, I was like, Hey man, Hey Garth, I'm going to come by. I was going to visit three different schools. I went to his and I'm like, this is home. This was most like my first school, chill, laid back. You can joke around, you can laugh, but it's serious training. And, um, yeah. And I, I just, I was like, I don't even need to go to the other schools. I'm like, this is home. This is, I'm super comfortable here. And I've been there for about two months. So, mm, but awesome. I could wear yeah. any, I could wear any color gi I want. <laughs> 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 could wear anything I want. Uh, the, the coach had a, a, a lime green, a lime green. You see how the lime behind James's head, but when that goes to the green, he was wearing oh, yeah, like yeah. a lime green, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> a lime green, uh, gi last night that we were all making fun of, <laughs> but, uh, but let's go, let's go back to that question. Why does Gracie Baja get such a bad rap about the, this key thing? Dang, dude, first off, uh, that's so badass. You start training when you're 40 and then and now you're a black belt. That's thank freaking, you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's dope, dude. Thank you. Like that's actually what jujitsu is about, you know? I'm broken. I'm I'm broken and beaten. <laughs> Everything hurts. I trained are. last night. Everything hurts right now. I'm sitting here like this right yeah. now, going, "Oh my god, I'm in so much pain." No, I'm just kidding. I, I, it's it's hard. It's harder. It's harder. Fifty one, but I I wouldn't give. Love it. I wouldn't give up any of it just to say, "Oh, get rid of this back pain." No, I'll take it. I take it and I love it. And I'll I'll see you tomorrow. There we go. That's that, that's yeah. it right there. Uh, but to answer your question, dude. Uh, I didn't know you were going to ask that. And 
<laughs> I mean, let's set let's set the record let's set the record straight. I really like I don't have a personal experience with it, so I'm not coming from the like trying to call you out no. on it. I hear so much about it, and it's like it's been an online joke. I mean, I you know, yeah. I think there's like a. I, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hit me. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Go yeah. ahead. So I actually started training. Uh, the first time I did jujitsu was was with this guy ha Javier Vasquez. Uh, he was a black belt under Rodrigo, uh, Rodrigo Madero. He was a he was like one of the early. He's an MMA um, guy, right? Yeah, oh, you know him. Yeah, he, uh, we spoken about coming on the podcast way way back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, I should have I should have him on. Yeah, he yeah he's been around the game for for so long. Yeah, he I follow was, uh, I follow him. I I I know who he is. I've kind of like we we talked uh, like he reached out and we talked about having him come on. I think it was early, like in him getting on social media. So I didn't know a lot about him. And then I Googled yeah. him and then I saw, oh shit. And I've heard other people mention him and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. This, this guy's a yeah, serious he was dude. Like one of those, he was like one of those earlier guys. Oh, He's an OG. I saw you had, Jay, you had Jason Scully, didn't you? Mm -hmm. On? Yeah. So, he, you know, that her, whole early American generation of like guys kind of sparking out and, and, and being yeah. top jiu guys, he, he was one of those guys. Yeah. And then he also did MMA. And he he made some uh, uh some big marks in there too like, uh, pretty much in that early. I've heard MMA. people like talk about him in those early days as like he was the was he like the goat at that time at least like a or pound for pound like was he that bad ass of a guy? He he was really good. Yeah, he had a he blew his knee, so that was one of the things that slowed mm. him down like a lot. But he was definitely one of those, the, the those top guys back yeah. back when okay. I was in. So I started at, at that school and it was in La Habra. Uh, did two months and I freaking loved it. It was like jujitsu and MMA. So he was doing both. Uh, the reason he he was married to Rose Gracie at the time too. So he okay. was like jujitsu royalty yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, all about it. <laughs> kind of wrestling background. This guy was like a college wrestler too. Uh, but then I, I, at the time I was in the military. So then uh, my unit got deployed. So I had to go, you know, uh, deploy. And then when I came back from from uh, from from the war uh that school was gone and luckily leo Vieira had just uh migrated over over here to the states yeah uh, you know so this was like at, at the at the very beginning of of, of checkmat so when i started training jiu-jitsu it was with checkmat and over there at that time was everybody everybody was there you know that's when kind of the uh that first big push when andre galvao was there the mendez brothers were there uh kaipo there was uh Robert Drysdale, oh. like whoever, whoever w was was there, and uh, that was Checkmat La Habra. So, so that's where I started training, and the type of training we were doing there was not Gracie. Let's say Gracie Baja, like you know, yeah. it was just, <laughs> it was just in there. So uh, I did that for a few years, and then, and when I was there, we would get. You know, I, I would hear the same, same thing you're talking about, like all that internet, like, oh, Gracie Baja, this is not, that's not even real jiu-jitsu, or, or it's like McDojo jiu-jitsu. Uh, that, that was my early jiu-jitsu experience with Gracie Baja. That, that's all I would hear. And then I would go to tournaments because I competed a ton. And, you know, uh, the, the first time that notion didn't make too much sense is when I went to the tournaments, and then I would see some, like, Gracie Baja killers. So I was like, yeah. wait, I thought you guys, these guys, like, sucked. I never, then, I like, never heard anything bad about the jiu-jitsu. Right, 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 right. Just the but uniforms in the cost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but for us, you know, you know how it is. Like, for I us, it's you, like, yeah. oh, that. If 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 it's like a if if you have to wear a certain gi or if there's rules, then the jujitsu can't be good. You know, at least that's how we thought. Like, because yeah. I was young, I was like 24, yeah. and and you know, we we talk crap on it, and they're like, oh, they they have cards, you know, and have attendance, you know, we we. Now, this now everybody does. Now everybody does. Yes. You know, cards for the yeah. kids, and then like check in, which is kind of my point. Yeah. yeah. So, so sixteen years ago, jujitsu wasn't like that at all. It was just like the wild, wild west. I mean, I remember us uh, new people coming in, and my goal was to like, they they would send me to have them spar in their first like week or whatever, and and my goal was to like take him out, and then after after the session was done, to be like, hey, see it works. <laughs> You, you, want to, you want to train? You want to sign up for this? You know, that, that was like jujitsu. That, that's how it was. Uh, and then, and then what happened? And then, so, so all, all to say that was all right. I had that same notion about Gracie Baja as well. And then my buddy, 
he broke off from Checkmap and then opened up a, a school out, out here in Orange County. And then it did super good. So then he opened up a few more schools and then he called me because he, he knew I taught to kids class. And he's like, dude, would you be willing, would you be interested in like running, running one of my schools or, or at least teaching it, uh, teaching a kids program? And, and at the time, I, I was kind of all over the place as far as like uh, work and stuff like that. So I was like, uh, but yeah, but I'm check mat, you know, so, so I, I don't think that's going to work. And then he's like, no, 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 you, you'll just run the school. Like, it's just work. You, you train over there. You don't have to be Gracie Baja. He's like, you, you're just going to you're gonna teach the kids and then, and then just, uh, you know, just work. And I was like, yeah, I was kind of young and dumb. So I was like, oh, yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> and gotcha. then uh, so, <laughs> so I went over to Gracie Baja. And obviously that didn't go well with check mat. And then, so I got the boot and then, so now really? I, was, I was at Gracie. So now I was, at, I was at Gracie Baja. But one thing that I, I observed really quick, really quick was that, oh shoot, it, it's structured here. Like it's, uh, there is a structure. Uh, um, they have all these like tra train, training, uh, curriculums. They have like a, a mission statement. They have a vision. And, you know, and the, the jujitsu that I came from, this was like not even, it was not even, on, any of these things were not even on the radar. Sure. It was just old, old school jujitsu training. And coming from a military background where uh, you're trying to teach a large amount of people to do very difficult tasks that are dangerous, you pretty much have to have structure. You Agreed. have to have like, you, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. have to have very uh, well thought out processes that are going to make someone who maybe uh, doesn't do this activity that you, you want them to do. Like, let's just say jump out of airplanes and then you have to create a process for it. And I think Gracie Baja was pretty much the first team to want to do that, to, to, to really not only, uh, bring jujitsu to everyone. They, they also wanted to make it in a way that would make it, uh, structured so that people could actually achieve doing jujitsu for everyone. So. So if that's your vision, if you want to bring jujitsu to a lot of people, you, you have to kind of be the first person that says, hey, we need to check there. You know, we need to make sure there's attendance. We need to make sure we have like a curriculum. We need to make sure we have all, uh, a uniform that, that kind of unifies all of us. Uh, I, at first, it wasn't something necessarily that I was like, oh, I want to do that. But I could easily see why an organization like Gracie Baja would do everything that they did. And it made me appreciate uh, it made me appreciate it. So I, I, I think when, when you ask the question, what, what gives what gives Gracie Baja a bad rap or why there's like that stigma originally, I think it's because they were the first ones to really kind of uh, put or, uh, a structure to mm -hmm. something that wasn't structured. And, and, I uh, and, and I'm glad that you answered it that way because I really actually do believe that more schools have moved that way, right? You have a like, yes. little check-in, little iPad, put your little code in, my last school. Like that got introduced after just like a couple of years ago. Um, but it was also like, yeah, you kind of do need to know when a student's here, like how often has he trained? Am I going to, you know, time does come into, you know, the promotion decision, like, oh, well, you're here once a week. Wait a minute. You're not going to get promoted with the guy that was here five times a week. Are you right? So I, yeah. I think those things are important. I do like, I like, I'm someone who likes structure. I think it's great, especially for the kids. You need it. Yes. And a lot of people are bringing their kids to jujitsu for discipline and structure. And if it's just like oh, ah, on the mats, right, you don't, it doesn't sure. work. Right. So um, I definitely think that that structure is good. Again, never experienced anything that I said myself, <laughs> just heard it. And I'm like, there's, it was like, yeah. even like a, I remember coming across like a, a an Instagram that like it, I think it was like uh, it, they changed it to like Baja Gracie or, Bracy Gaha, something like that. Like they switched the words and started an Instagram <laughs> account. And yeah. I followed it because it was funny, but like I just thought it was funny. I'm like, wow, these guys, man, how much do these guys charge? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, I mean, look, my, I, I didn't hate, I, 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 I came from a school, you know, you could wear any gi. And then my last school was pretty much uh, white gi all the time, only yeah. white gi. Coaches could wear black. And then uh, they started doing like competition. If you competed, you can get a black gi. And you only wear mm -hmm. it during competition training. So mm -hmm. I experienced uh, fair, you know, no big deal. And you didn't even have to buy their, but you didn't have to buy their gear. You know, it's like wear any white gear, but he, you know, he'd say, hey, I sell gear. I sell geese guys. You, there's geese over there. You can buy them from me. Or, you know, if you buy them online, just wear white. Uh, one time we played a joke on him on, on April fool's days, a bunch of guys like ordered like the orange 
geese. Like one was like a NASA gi and one was like, I think like a Pokemon gi or something like that. He was like, get, get out, get, he's like, go change that. <laughs> go change right now. You're not wearing that. I don't care. It's April fools. But, um, yeah, man, again, I, that's a great explanation. I, I, I think structure is good. And I, I think, uh, you know, they've built, a a a, uh, a worldwide brand, right? This isn't just the United States, you know, Gracie Bob is a worldwide brand and it works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? So I think there's something and, and to be said I, for all of that. Yeah. And to be honest, like, uh, cause again, I, I started just like 16, 16 years ago, but even prior to that, like I, I would watch it a lot. I, I, used, I thought it was cool. I'd get magazines and like kind of read up on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but again, prior to that, it was the wild, wild west, dude. Like the, <laughs> you yeah. know, it, it really actually was. And, um, they, they were the first ones to do a lot of things that now is like baseline for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you mean? What, whether, whether it's a curriculum, whether it's like attendance cards, whether it's like having an intro class to kind of introduce someone to jujitsu, whether, whether it's even trying to figure out a way, way to make jujitsu, uh, 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 kind of like, oh, you, you could do jujitsu. Like, oh, you know, here, here's a warm up. You're going to start with a little warm up. Here, here are some, some good, like, little basic, uh, first class drills you're gonna run through you know i call, like, I call that ju the jujitsu 101 like yeah I, I used to love when like they give me like hey this guy's brand new like if there was a bigger guy because i'm i'm like walking around at like 230 240 and they'd put that guy with that big guy with me they'd be like look milt amazon prime just delivered you a new student and like and they'd put me with that big guy and, and be like show him the basics i love doing that stuff i call it i would say jujitsu 101 rather than just throwing him into a class like they have no clue what's going on so the instructor would show something, but when they would say, okay, work on that, I'd go just to the jujitsu 101 stuff. We'd watch the move, but I'd be like, okay, we're not doing that though. Come on, we're going to go do this. So, um, yeah, again, I, but that's, that's great structure, man. That's, that's smart. What do you guys, yeah. what do you guys think about it? James, what do you like? Did you, does it, did anybody hear what, well, you guys have been there for how long that, uh, James is a purple belt. So obviously I'm going to assume you've been with Gracie Baja the least amount of time. Did you yeah, ever about hear about years. any of that stuff? It sounds like you probably got recruited by Brian. Did you hear about yeah. any of that or know any about it? those little like those little things that are Gracie Baja? Or you were just in the door and and you get addicted I, like I was of just us? I was just in the door. Uh, funny thing, Brian uh, he he hit me up one day asking me to 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 try out jujitsu at his school, and uh, I was had like, you, yeah, had yeah, you yeah, trained was... anywhere else before? No, no, no I, no, I never even thought about it until yeah. he he brought it up to me. Um, I was always, my, my life before was no martial arts. I, I used to lift weights. Um, I used to party a lot, drink, drink a lot of Brian, alcohol. Brian mentioned something about your journey before he was just like, you can ask yeah. James about his journey. Yeah. And I thought there was going to be something here, <laughs> but go on, yeah, go on. Tell us, total, give us the dirt. Total 180. Um, I, so I used to drink a lot like Thursday to Sunday. I'd be partying every night with my friends. Um, so I used to smoke cigarettes all the time. Yeah. You know, I used to. And then, uh, you know, he hit me up to see if I wanted to train. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I think I'd want to try it. And then the next day I was in an Uber and I got rear ended and I was in the back of the Uber and I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. So pretty much blasted out both my shoulders. And then, uh, he hits me up and he's like, Hey, you ready to come train? I was like, uh, can't, can't, can't train. Uh, I told him what happened. And I was like, this guy probably thinks I'm a liar or that like I'm scared <laughs> or something. So, uh, <laughs> a year late, he waits, he actually waits like a year and, and he messages me again. He's like, Hey, are your shoulders better? You want to come train? And I was like, yeah, well, like I can't pitch out. You know, he waited a yeah. year to ask me, so I got to go. Um, and, and like I said, I, I never knew anything about jujitsu. I never heard anything about Gracie Baja, a anything negative or positive for that matter. I was, I was just like, okay, I'll try it. It's a new exercise. And, um, you know, I, I thought I was just going to go in there and just, just tear everyone up, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, if you don't train martial arts and you lift weights, you just think like size is everything. Yeah. I went in there and, nope. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm six, six, two, you know, and, and I, I go in there and I see Alex who's, you know, maybe five ten, five eleven, And I'm like, man. I'm going to crush this guy, dude. Like, I'm going to annihilate this dude. I'm going to be running the school, you know. And, and mind you, I just finished smoking a cigarette before I walked into class. <laughs> thinking, like, dude, this, it's over. 
Um, but that, that was sort of my journey into it. But to answer your question, I, I didn't hear anything negative or, or positive yeah. uh, about it. Um, but like, I, I have been seeing the memes going around as of lately. Yeah. Um, probably the same ones you've been seeing. I, I think it's actually pretty funny. I think it's funny. It, it's it's yeah. good. And listen, you don't, um, what do they say? Like, you don't shoot down, right? No. People no, shoot up. You go for the guy in the top. Yeah, you're yeah. going, you, 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 what do you, I'm gunning for the top guy, not the freaking guy at the, mm. at the bottom of the totem pole. So I think it's, uh, I, I think it's like a badge of honor for, yeah. for somebody to be, you know, talking about you, good or bad, right? As long as it's not too bad. The things that they're saying aren't bad. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, you got to wear white gear over there and buy their gear. Like, oh, like that's the worst thing in the world that could possibly, that somebody could make you do. Uh, so it's called the uniform for a reason, right? We're all uniform, right? It's it's a good thing. I like it. But I like again at fifty one, ten years in, like I well, like I I pulled out all my my blackies when they told me that I could wear any gear I wanted. I was like I took out all my blackies that I never got rid of that I haven't been able to wear for the last eight years, and I wear them every day now. And they gave me a and they gifted me a black key for uh, for joining. So now I have another one. So I, I you know I, I I'm older now. But if I was to if I was to put somebody in a, like tell somebody to go to a school, I usually say, "What? Why are you doing it? Is you know, is your kid having a problem? Is there a discipline problem? Is somebody bullying? Like it might influence where I tell them to go. You know, maybe you should go here, and they have like a bully, anti bullying program, or this one's more structured. Or look, this is a little bit more open, or they have MMA there. You know, like what are you going for? What are you looking for? So." Um, you know, that's one of the things that we're going to do on the Academy Safe website, too, is like, you know, it's not just jujitsu, it's everything. So, you know, if it's kickboxing and Muay Thai or if it's jujitsu and kickboxing, right, there's going to be you can you can find those gyms if you if you know what you're looking for. And if you don't, you know, they're all there and they'll be listed and you'll learn a little bit about the Academy and what they have. So, um, yeah, actually, I have a question cool. about that. Sure. How, how's the reception been when you reach out to schools to to sign up for that? So it's because I would imagine it should be pretty good. And if it's not it. It almost raises like a red flag. Aha, uh -huh. you got it. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I was going to say. Is so, and so we've launched. We have a homepage, and our blog is up. The website, the full website's about to launch. We're going to be beta testing. Actually, I'm going to probably spend tonight and this weekend um, working on the store locator and the back end that does the background checks and and holds all of our other certifications. So right now. We're ready to go, and I have a waiting list of academies that have signed up that said, like, we want to be one of the first through the door. So, like, hey, we, you know, we, we've been advertising, get on our waiting list so that we had people to help us beta test. I know a lot of them, too, so that's a good thing. So it's just like, hey, look, we're going to get you in early. Tell me if you hit any roadblocks or stumbling blocks. But the back-end system is the back-end system. It's like it's from an outside company that does the background checks, the USA Sports Certification, and they also do a concussion uh, course which for martial for insurance purposes if you if you say you're a martial arts academy they want the concussion course now so they know that it exists and that it's something that you should have. they want it as part of your insurance and i think it could lower your rates um so those three things are in the system and then we get to add in CPR, first aid defibrillator certification so we've got american red cross covers 99% of the country so we've got a partnership with a defibrillator company who has the partnership with Red Cross who you can lease a defibrillator from them if you don't have one and or then get certification on the defibrillator itself and get your first aid and CPR if you don't have it. Simple requirements, right? Shouldn't we all have that? That I had a heart, I had, just so you know, you guys, have, if, you, if you never heard the show, I had a heart attack when I was 43 after I started jujitsu. I actually had a heart attack, two heart attacks, Friday and Saturday after training jujitsu, but I didn't know I was having a heart attack. I was just like hard to breathe and I was having some, some pains in my arm. So when I look for a gym, as a matter of fact, after the heart attack, my last gym, I told them, I'm like, Hey man, do you guys, if you guys, if you guys don't know CPR, please get a defibrillator. Cause I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if this happens again. Do I have like heart disease? Was it just clogged arteries? You know, and they got one, but they got one. Nobody knew how to use it. Nobody was tra nobody came to train them on it. Nobody had first aid CPR. None of that. So we're trying to make like Academy Safe is, you know, at, at the inception was about um, making sure we keep you know sexual predators and violent offenders out of academies. They probably shouldn't be teaching our kids, right? Not probably. They shouldn't be teaching our kids, mm -hmm. and or be around 
our women, our daughters, our wives, right? Our girlfriends. And then the other things came into play. And when I spoke to Rob, it's like, hey, we should be doing this. And aren't these other things that make an academy safe? But these are like some of these things are required and gyms get passed and don't and open and don't have these things or get a little slap in Florida. You get a little slap on the wrist or a little citation for not having a defibrillator, but it's cheaper to pay that citation than to, than to get the defibrillator. So we're going to work with a company that will lease it, sell it or lease it, and then get you certified on it. And it's like completely like 20, this is like 2025 version of defibrillators. It's online. There's an app, it charges. You could bring it anywhere with you. Like if you go to a competition, you could put it in your bag, bring it with you. Um, it tells you where other defibrillators are. If like you're a partner and like you're someplace like, oh my God, I need a defibrillator. Like it'll show you where other defibrillators are. Like it's just a whole thing. Um, but they'll come train you on it. They'll send a Red Cross representative to train you on it along with the first aid and CPR. And then we get into like just having business insurance or, or academy insurance. And um, uh, and then again, the lineage check, which is probably like one of the most important things to Rob at McDojo. So like that's that's his that's his niche. That's what he wants. Like, I'm going to be involved with this. We got to do lineage checks. I've been talking about fake black belts for the longest time. Let's make sure we keep them out as well. So the reception, the question was the reception. The reception has been incredible. People like when I brought the idea to Rob, he's like, Milton, people have been asking me to do this for years. He's like, but I'm one man. I can't just do this. And I come to him with, I got my whole marketing company, the idea. And now him and I get together. We got a, a secret service agent is on our board. Um, one of the, uh, we've got, a, a a media and PR guy that's had like decades of experience writing books and being on the news. He got us into the local paper here, the sun Sentinel. Like we've got like some heavy hitters that are, that are helping us with this. The reception from the public has been great. We have to launch and show that we can deliver on this, which we're going to. Um, and again, it's kind of like part of it already existed now. So we've built the website and the informational side. So you can find the Academy once we certify them or at least show there the process of certification. But then the back end existed already, and I'm, I've been I've been holding back on telling everybody who a company a huge company bought the back the biggest background check company in this world. They do it for USA Wrestling, and they do it for some other martial arts organizations. Um, but nobody's doing what we do. But a huge company came in and bought them and launched a new product. So we will be the first martial arts organization using the new version of this background check and UF Center for Safe Sports Certification. So that's really cool. And when you see the logo on our site, when you, when you, you can be like, what, how are they involved with this? But it'll make sense when we explain it, why that company is involved and what, what they're doing. But um, yeah, it's really cool. The reception has been awesome. I'm excited. We haven't even like gone full court press on the advertising yet, but just with the social media, Rob posting, me posting, talking about it on the podcast, We've had a lot of interest, so uh, I think this is going to be really big. I, I would say this. I'm sorry to go so long. I go, you guys are the guests, and I'm going long here with this. But the way oh, that I've been, the way that I've been explaining it to people is, we want to be to to martial arts what doesn't exist right now, without government intervention, without it being a government agency that says you have to do these things. Or imagine having to do these certifications with the government; it becomes more difficult. You might not be able to open your academy, right? We're not saying you can't open. We're just saying get these things done, and all of your coaches should have X, Y, and Z as well. What we're the way that Rob explained it to people, and I and I've been using it because I think it's a great explanation. When you go to a movie and you see rated R, that's the Motion Picture Association of America giving it that rating. That's not a government agency, right? Because people have been like, "Hey, are you trying to like get the government to regulate? Because that would be shitty, and we don't want the government involved." Like, no, we're just a private nonprofit. We're just a, an organization that thinks that these things should be required and we should tell people that are looking for an academy or parents looking for jujitsu or martial arts for their kids that these are the things that they should be asking and they should know about. So we're going to give you a registry of all the gyms in the, in the United States that have these things. Just like, again, you go to a movie theater, you see Rated R, that's a private organization. Most, Motion Picture Association of America is a private organization who does the ratings. We're a private organization, essentially almost like rating the academy. Rating the Academy, you have these things, your Academy safe. If you don't, we can list you, but we're also going to show the things that you haven't done yet. So that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to make it more public. If we keep some of the creepers out and we kind of pull back the curtain and, and an Academy finds out, man, I, I didn't know we had this predator. I didn't know we had a, a somebody who had raped a little girl 10 years ago and is out of jail and is a martial, like 
that exists right now. That is happening in martial arts. There are people hiding. And I think the background checks are going to push those people out and make and make martial arts as a whole more safe. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. And that, that's what we started. But then we introduced these other things. Okay, let's also be safe with this. What if my kid, I choose your school because you're a because you have everyone's background checked and you have your, your safe sports certifications. But what happens when little Johnny cuts his leg or hits his head? Can you recognize concussions? The, 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 the striking disciplines, Muay Thai, boxing, right, kickboxing. What happens when little Johnny gets hurt? Can you recognize that that kid might have a concussion and tell his parents, like, hey, he just got hurt. Maybe you should take him to the doctor, right? So, like, just these little things that do make an academy safer. Do you have – look at that, the, the, the case with uh, – that Henry Gracie got kind of – into a little bit of trouble uh, online, the the forty six million dollar lawsuit, right? Oh yeah. What if that? Yeah, the guy that broke his neck, right? What if that yeah. academy didn't have any insurance? What if he had let his lap his insurance expire, right? What do we do? Yeah. What happens, right? So, isn't an insurance important part of choosing, right? Like if you're you you talked about Uber before, whose insurance covered? Like, how does it work in California? Like. Did you sue anybody? Did you get what you, 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 I'm assuming you were covered at some layer by somebody's insurance. Yeah. Yeah. The person yeah. who hit, who, uh, rear ended us covered it. Yeah. But it, it was a weird situation because yeah. I was in a newer, you know. So, like in Florida, we have some, like, I don't know if this, what other states it's like, but we have something called PIP insurance. So, like, the first $10,000 of my medical coverage, regardless of what they have, the first $10,000 is covered by my, ins my car insurance, even if I'm in somebody else's car will cover me P under their PIP insurance. That's the way I kind of understand it. I, I was in an accident one time when somebody else is like, you're co you're like almost guaranteed that $10,000 of coverage under somebody's insurance, right? But what if, again, what if you didn't have insurance, you didn't have a, you don't drive a car and you get hit by somebody who doesn't have insurance, right? So what, what difference, shouldn't we think about that with businesses, right? You have to have business insurance, but again, you know, you open your academy, you have business insurance, but you let it lapse. Right. We're going to be able to uncover that. You've got to you've got to submit your insurance every year. Like so there are going to be checks at every level. And again, luckily, the software that we're going to have is going to let us do that and um, keep track of those things. Uh, this is to some small level. Google does this with, uh, you know, I'm in the marketing world. So I saw that Google does this and I help people get onto their local uh, local services program. It's called local service ads. And they do a version of this. Upload your insurance, upload your license, your billing information. And then every year it, it reminds you, hey, your insurance is going to expire in 30 days. So like our platform is going to do that and let people know like, hey, you need to, you know, hey, upload, you know, where's your new insurance? And if you're not, then you, you lose your safe, your uh, academy safe certification or accreditation. So it's going to we're going to take it that far. It's, it's going to be that we're, we're hoping to be that like motion picture association of America. We're, we're looking to be that for martial arts, but all of martial arts, because I think that that's important. You know, it's not just jujitsu where, yes, I have experience in jujitsu and I've seen what happens in our sport, but it's happening everywhere. So we decided to just do it with everyone. And if, if we can just if I can keep some creepers out of the gym, I think it's a win. You know, amazing work. Miller. I have cool. actually a story. Um, so like there's creepers everywhere. And, you know, my daughter, you know, when she turned, I think it was like 15, 16 years old. You know, we started, you know, I took her to LA Fitness. She wanted to start working out, like using the rack and, you know, like the squat rack and really get into lifting. And I told her at the gym, I mean, there's always going to be people that are there just to be creepers, right? You like, sometimes you can't tell. And then sometimes they're obvious. And uh, so um, sort of just on the heels of this, this conversation, um, there was a guy that was probably like in his late 50s who was sort of trying to befriend a lot of the younger crowd, like the high school kids that would go to work out. And, uh, you know, he was, my daughter is super affable and, you know, she's very gracious. And like, so like, she was always like smiling and saying hi to people or whatever. And, um, you know, sort of being naive, you know, I always try to tell her like, you know, if someone's, especially if, like they're an older dude, they're saying so, too much or whatever, just like, just be like, oh, you know, just ignore them or wave or whatever. That was it. Well, this guy, one day she was at the squat rack and, uh, she had these sweatpants on and she, and she took them off to you know, cause she was hot. She was, you know, had shorts or whatever. She was about to, you know, hit the squat rack. And this guy, you know, walks up to her and says, uh, Oh, you know, I, I was waiting for you to take those pants off. And mind you, this is like, he's probably closer, closer to 60. And, um, and so she was like, Oh, like, you know, you're not expecting that from this person. Right. And so 
she said she doesn't tell me because she thinks I'm going to go in there and probably kill the guy with the dumbbell. Right? <laughs> so, um, long story short, you know, one day me and my wife were in there working out, and she goes, "Oh, there's that guy," and I go, "What? What guy?" And she was like, "Oh," and she, I guess she kind of was hesitant to tell me, and then she told me the story, and I was like, "Wait, what?" And so I'm about to like literally, and he's like four people away from me, and I have literally a dumbbell in my hand, and I was like, like the rage in me, bro, like as a, as a dad, right? Like I wanted to mm -hmm. just crack the guy over the head, right? So then I sort of collected myself and I was like, what do I do in this situation? Um, so it's all to say, like, there, these guys are everywhere, right? And, yeah. and then not to mention, like, if you're, you're in a school, uh, you know, oftentimes the, the, the victims of these kinds of crimes are people without a dad around, right? And so I don't know the ratio of, like, kids that train and if their dad's around or not. But, you know, I think these predators are, are they look for these, these, these signs, right? And yeah. so they... they have ways of finding these people. So I think what you're doing is great work. Thank you. And thank you. Um, it'll be, be well received. I think it's awesome. Man. I, I think so. it, I think that we're on to something. It doesn't exist. There are small, you know, USA wrestling does the safe sport and the background checks for coaches and refs. They do this. They're using the background check company that got purchased by the company that we're using now. So there's a form of this that exists. There's one martial arts organization that also does for their members, but there's nothing mandatory about it. They're like, oh, if you want to join our, our, it's like a karate organization. If you want to join our karate organization, you you know, you know, do these two things and, and you're there. But it's just yeah. that. There's nothing past that. There's nothing that's like, hey, reporting agencies. Like we, we put a resources page for like missing and exploited children and like different like 800 numbers that you can call. Like want to ju not just be register you and then and then show the academies that are registered but we want to give information we want we want people to we want to be like a resource and let people know this is at least a start of where you go if something like this is happening and funny enough i have my own la fitness story there used to be a guy that used to like grab the youngest kids he could because i always used to go there to use the bags because if i was doing jujitsu and like i didn't have a bag at the house i would want to go hit the bags and as long as there wasn't a class you go hit the bags and there was always this one guy and it'll be like, there's like six, seven bags. So there would be a lot of like young kids. And there would be this guy that'd be like, hey, you want to hit pads? He was like an old creepy guy. And he clearly didn't know how to like hold the pads. Like he didn't know anything. But he would always like go towards the kids. And I would just stare at him, make sure he knew that I was staring at him. I'm older, you know, I'm not, don't look like a kid. And I would just always give him that look like, I fucking know what you're doing. I, you know, you're not going after any adults. You didn't ask me to hold pads. Like you're clearly going after these kids. And, you know, old, just old, creepy, out of shape guy with like walking around, like, let me hit the, and like, yeah, like, like, not clearly doesn't know what he's doing. And, and yeah, like, I, I you see it and you kind of know, you just know, like, we know, we know, like, you got, but what do you do? But now imagine that was like a worker. Like, imagine that that guy was employed, like the guy that did that with your daughter. Imagine he worked there. So he yeah. didn't just do it. That guy didn't just do that to your daughter. He's done that before. But imagine oh, if he worked there and he's supposed to be there and he's there for eight hours a day and it's just waiting like for target, 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 right? Okay. Now carry that over into what we do. In jujitsu, aren't we like in the most, in, I call it the most intimate of the martial arts, right? We're laying on top of each other. I was sitting on my, my training partner's head yesterday trying to get a, you know, a Kimura. Like we're, we're in some, you know, um, uh, you know, Angie uh, Overkill Hill, Angie Overhill Kill from UFC, right? Uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, Angie Overhill. What's her last name? Does anybody know? No. Angela Hill. They call her Overkill Hill, right? Angela Hill, UFC okay. fighter. She just did a video. I just saw it yesterday with her and another girl rolling and like showing all of those like they were making a joke like they're sitting on each other's heads, but smiling at the camera like they're making in front of like that this intimacy that is jujitsu. Like we wind up in some really fucked up positions, you know, as guys and girls. Right. <laughs> Sure. So, like, now carry that over. You're an adult rolling with kids. I've called it, there's this, in the mind of somebody who might be sick or doesn't, yep. maybe has something beneath the surface where, like, he's just like, I don't see anything wrong with dating that 16-year-old girl. There's this perceived in intimacy. You've just rolled with a child, maybe a girl. You're an adult male. There's this perceived intimacy, right? Like, well, we were just laying on top of each other, so maybe I can chat her up or maybe I can touch her arm or hit her on the butt, right? Like, there's this perception in the mind of somebody who's not healthy or a creeper, I can do this and it's okay. I believe my old coach, that was part of his problem. He was, uh, you know, he was revered 
and you know he's rolling with people and he i believe he's sick he's admitted to me part of his problem he there's this perception that well this is okay cuz i was just laying on top of her what's the difference right it's sick it's not right it's wrong but there's this perception in the mind of somebody that's not healthy that is prone to do something like what that guy did to your daughter it's just like well if she smiles at me then it's okay She's yeah. giving me the well, green think, light, right? Like, it's okay. Because she smiled at me and waved at me, I can say this. this there's a perception of this, some type of intimacy that we share. Take that in jujitsu. It goes so much further because we're literally touching each other. You're hitting a boob. Your nuts get hit, right? I mean, this, this all stuff that happens to all of us, whether we're rolling with guys or girls, right? We know it. So yeah. I think that it's it's been worse, at least, I guess, being in jujitsu, you hear about it, and it's been worse within jujitsu because of that perception. Because of that yeah. literal intimacy of guys and girls rolling together, it gets weird. Yeah. You know? Yep. So one of the unique things about jiu-jitsu as an activity is that, yeah, you're, you know, the, the same thing that makes it cool, which is that like us as grown men can sort of, you know, like our inner child, like with rough play and like just, you know, messing around, like that you would never, what other activity are you going to be like that close to somebody trying to choke them out or whatever on top of them? On the on the other side of it, to, to your point, is that you know it could be much more sinister, where it's you know these these environments where these kind of creepers can do all this stuff or whatever. So yeah, it's um, you know I'll, I'll kind of going back to what you're doing is I think super critical for the environments and and uh, I think is is going to be a standard at some point you know as it grows and you know I hope so yeah I really hope so and and you know we're we're going to hope that you know not only the small organizations, but the Gracie Bajas, the American top teams, even the fight sports that they, that they mandate, Hey, listen, you got, we need you to do that. Right. We're basically like, Hey, you're, especially if like you're a new franchisee coming in or an Academy owner coming into a, an existing affiliation to say, Hey, part of the approval is to go to Academy safe, get out, get all your stuff done. And then we can get you approved. Like I could live with that. We had a we had one of the biggest. Uh, I don't want to say the name yet because we might do something with them. One of the biggest organizations came to us um, that uh, 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 type with one of the. Uh, it's a Taekwondo association. They came to us and they're like, "How can we work together? How do uh, we like what you're doing? We do some of it. How could we work together?" And they're discussing on their end. Okay, we see we see that this is the fit. That's the hope. If we can get it, if it can be top down, it could be bottom up. It could be the little academies. But obviously, if it's top down, if like, you know, the Gracie Bajas, the American top teams, the fight sports, the the check mats, right? If they all say, hey, you guys have to do this. You got a year or two years to get this done. And this is where you're going to do it. And when they tell us you're good, then, you know, like then you're in good standing. That, that would be a, that would be great. We don't need it. But that would be great if the people at the top see it and go, yeah, this just makes sense. Like, why aren't why aren't we doing this already? You know, so we've got our fingers crossed, you know. Uh, but uh, we're going to press forward no matter what. And look, having a guy like like Rob, who, or, you know, the McDojo life brand itself, like we probably all know it just from seeing like crazy videos, the funny ones, the weird ones, the 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 sick ones, you know, um, just having him on board was 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 huge for us. And um, yeah, man, you know, our, our, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying it, but like the Secret Service agent, I had a Secret Service agent. His name is Joe Scargill on the show. We got to talking, told him about what we we're doing. He's like, man, I want to be involved with this. And what I didn't know was the Secret Service is like heavily involved with missing and exploited children. At least like the organization for missing and exploited children is by his office in, in Jacksonville. But I believe the Secret Service is involved. Right. They have they do like joint, uh, you know, um, they work together you know, on on cases and things like that. And so this was just like, I'm what do you need from me? And I was just like, well, well, you know, could we have you on the board? So he came on the board. This he was the head. Joe Scargill was the head of Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s. A detail while he was running for president right so like we don't it's this isn't like we got some little guys in but like we got some like heavy hitters and like this is oh. we're not fucking around here you know rob you know six hundred and forty thousand followers on instagram alone right you know me with the podcast I'm, I'm the little guy in this equation but then you know a guy a secret service agent who's that close to things like this happening to kids already like you know seeing that um this is like we're we're and we're looking for more like you know who else could we have involved so you know we've got some spaces for some for some big guys to come in and and you know like hey be part of this advise us what are we doing right what are we doing wrong what could we do better what could you bring to the table could you, you know what who you can you know what relationships do you have so um or you know could you be an advisor to the board have you done something like this before so we're uh you know we're still in our infancy phases we just started this in july it was like july 24th i think i registered the company like officially in like south florida 
we're in Florida, and we're so August, September, October. By the end, in three months, we'll have a fully operational site doing this from an idea, literally like idea logo to this. You know, so I'm I'm, pre I'm proud of it. It couldn't have done it without my marketing company, like being the staff of the of Academy Safe right now, uh, which made it easier. The average person would have had to find the website company and find the logo guy, right? You know, find all these people. The podcast is responsible for all of this. So if it wasn't for the everyone that is is involved to date, with the exception of my daughter who is like our recording secretary on the, on the board, everyone else that's involved is from, I've met through the podcast. So like I started the podcast for fun and who knew five years later, it was going to be like the thing that held this all together. That like was the glue and the reason why we met all these people. So, um, I pre yeah, man, I appreciate the, uh, you know, I, I like that you like the idea. Now we've got to make it happen. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to watch no, out for you. We're going to watch out for your I, registration, I, Alex. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I got a question for you, Milton. It's a completely separate topic. Sure. So I think on one of your other episodes, I, I heard you mention um, that before you started training, you know, you would, you, like many people, like many, like, you know, alpha dudes would be like one of the first guys to maybe start some shit or something like at a bar or whatever. Yeah. Like after, you know, training and, you know, obviously becoming a black belt, like you're like the last person you want anybody to even know that you even train, like you want to be low key other than like, you know, the jujitsu shirt or whatever. Sure. Uh, so one, one, I think that's cool. Cause I, you know, I think that's true for a lot of uh, people that, that start training, like the, you know, the last thing they want to do is get into confrontation. Um, and as, as a martial artist, like now you sort of, you're more aware and, and you're, you're familiar with potential outcomes. And, and just because you train doesn't mean that someone can't just land a haymaker on you you know, if you're not paying attention or whatever. Um, one of the questions we get a lot is like, oh, now that you're a black belt, like, have you ever had to use it in the streets or whatever? Sure. Uh, my question to you is, have you ever, have have you had any sort of physical confrontation where you've had to, you know, use your uh, jiu-jitsu background, like to kind of stabilize something or anything like that in, in real life? I have not. My last fight was pretty much before I started jujitsu. I forget the year, but it was, uh, I was at a club on New Year's and I come out of a stall where a guy and his wife were in that stall snorting coke before me. I go take a piss. I come out. She lost her purse. He thinks I have it and tells me, I'm going to search you before you. I had a jacket. I had a like a sport coat on. So, like, I'm going to search you before you leave the bathroom. I'm like, yeah, going to search me. He threw me up against the wall. Why not, long story short, I knock him out. That was the last time I had a fight. And I hadn't, other than hitting a bag and teaching myself how to fight on a, on a heavy bag, I had no formal training. Um, that was the last fight I had. And pretty soon after that, I'd probably say within a year or two, I started training jujitsu. And at my first school, I did jujitsu and we had a Muay Thai coach. So we had like, you know, MMA classes, right? I have never gotten into another fight since that. Two reasons. Number one, as soon as I started to learn the fight, I'm like, yeah, man, I, what if I hurt somebody and I, I might get in more trouble than that person, right? You know, even if they started the fight now, if I know what I'm doing and I hurt somebody, you know, back in the day, they used to joke around about like, if you're a if you're a black belt, you have to register your hands with the police department. Do you ever hear that joke or anybody say yeah. that? People actually still ask us that. Like, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you had to register with the police department, the deadly weapon. Um, <laughs> like not that, but I realized, oh, wow. Right. If I hurt somebody now, I'm the guy that that knew more and they could lay the blame at my feet. And as, you know, kind of I've owned businesses and did well with in certain industries and buying and selling real estate. I'm like, I got a little bit of money. What if they sue me? I don't have money now, so don't nobody sue me. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, being in that position of like, you have a lot to lose, let's call it that, right? You have a lot to lose and you're like, I don't need to get involved. But it was training, knowing that I started to know, not that I was some badass and can kick everybody's ass, but just knowing that like, shit, what if I do, what if I am that guy? Um, and then the other side of it was, you said this before, the guy that the the dorky, skinny, long legged guy that's an accountant is the baddest guy on the mat, and you would never know. Mm -hmm. Realizing that I don't know what anybody else knows. What I yep. you could start a fight with anybody, and all of a sudden, number one, Florida. This is the Wild West down here. Everybody carries. Um, you got guns. You got knives. I'm not bulletproof, and I you know, I don't got great knife defense because I haven't worked on that. You know, I can roll around on it. Once I get on the ground, we're get, we're, you know, you're in my world, right? That's what we think. But you never know what somebody else knows. So it's kind of like, I don't want to get myself in, I don't want to get myself into trouble. I don't want to get into self, myself into some legal liability. 
but I also don't, you don't know what the other guy knows. So I think, yeah. you know, I think a lot of jujitsu jiu academies, you know, tell kids, right? Like first thing is like deescalate. No, leave me alone. Right. Walk away, tell a teacher kind of thing. Right. Like the, sh the first thing you should that as an adult, we shouldn't be doing is like throwing our fists or putting our hands on somebody. So it's very, you know, it's so much ego involved when, when you think you know how to fight, but you're not formally trained. There's so much ego. Like I got to prove myself. I don't got to prove my, I don't feel like I don't need to prove myself to some wacko on the street. So it's so it's easy to walk away because my ego, like if I'm with a girlfriend or my wife or something like that, not my ex-wife, <laughs> if I'm with a girl, I'm sorry, if I'm with a girl or a woman, right, or if I was with my ex-wife, like me walking away was like the best like thing that I could do for like, that was the manly thing to do was like, shit, man, you would have killed that guy, right? Like, you know? So walking away becomes easier. But when you don't know, like you're trying to prove something to that person or the people around you or your friends, like, I could fight, I could do and then you get yourself into trouble. So I, I just think, you know, once you know how to fight or know, once you know how to do jujitsu, it's so much easier to walk away and you're just like, I don't want to get involved. I want to go to jujitsu tomorrow. I don't want to be locked up from fighting, you know? And then if you're really smart, you realize like, you know, jujitsu can't stop a bullet no matter what you think, you know? And uh, honestly, I don't know what the laws are in California, but like they just dropped a licensing requirement. So like you can, you had to have a concealed carry permit. Now you don't even have to have the concealed carry permit to carry a gun in Florida. So. Hey, wait, uh, so in Florida, you don't need a conceal anymore. Wow. Uh, so everybody's. You could have a gun in your house, but if you wanted to conceal carry, you had to, you know, you had to have a license. There's no even, oh, you, oh. Can, you had to have a license to conceal carry. Now that's okay. gone, so you can carry. But you were you could have a, a a gun in the house and in the car, but you couldn't wear it on your person without having the concealed carry. Um, okay. And honestly, like I I'm a son of a cop, never touched a gun in my life till I my first jujitsu coach brought me to shoot it was the first time I actually shot guns in my forties, and I carry now. I only carry because everybody else is carrying. If I didn't have to, I would love to not have to carry. I'm, I live one town over from Parkland where the Parkland shooting was. After that is when I got my license and I still didn't get a gun for like another year. And then there was another shooting and I was like, I got to get a gun. And now Ooh. like I, I carry, I ha I feel like I just, I don't feel unsafe not carrying, but I feel more comfortable carrying, especially in Florida because everybody's got something. You know? It's sad. I think that's sad, but that's also how much I love Florida. I'm not going to leave Florida just because of that, you know? <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's a crazy situation here, man. Yeah, a lot of people are packing over here too. In Orange yeah. County, it's they're giving out those licenses like candy. Like you pretty much. So before you would have to like as part of the process, you would have to have a reason that like let's say like oh I'm a, you know I own a liquor store and I have a lot of money at the end of the night and I got to transport it. And if you didn't have like a, like a good reason like that, then they could just outright deny you. Sure. But now they don't even ask that anymore. Like it's not even a requirement. Like they just you pretty much as long as you. I think past the background check, whatever it is that they do, um, they pretty much just hand them out. Yeah. So that's like New York. I grew up in New York. My dad was a cop in New York. He, you know, cops could carry, and you, or you had to have a reason to carry. But there's no concealed carry in New York. You know, in the city or Long Island. I grew up on Long Island, so nothing, nothing there. But um, yeah, yeah th this is a much different world, man. I don't, I don't love having to carry, but I can't. You know, it's kind of like you kind of have to. You know. Yeah. Um, you but know, hey, look, guys, I, I want to get we're, we're almost running out of time and I want to get to our, we have a segment of the show called The Drill Down. I got a bunch of questions that I'm going to ask. And what we'll do is we'll go instead of everyone answering every question because we're short on time now, we're going to we'll go. I'll uh, I'll ask each of you one of the questions and we'll just go down this list. So it's just kind of like gear, gear, no gear, take down a pull guard. Tell me your favorite. You could elaborate. You could take some time and elaborate if you want. So we'll start with with Brian at the top. Gear, no yeah. gear. What's your preference? No gear. Alex, take down or pull guard? Take down. Okay. Um, James, music during rolling, yes or no? Oh, yes, definitely. What are the rules at your academy, Alex? You, you guys play music when you roll? Do you play music the whole time during class or no music at all? We're banging. Music. Yeah. Just for Justin Bieber. Now. Brian, that yeah. goes for Brian. Uh, <laughs> Justin Bieber. All right. But, you know. I was, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around the horn here. Brian, if you're controlling the music, what are you listening to? Rage Against the Machine. Alex. I heard you say on. Justin Bieber. We'll take that. <laughs> James, what are you listening to? Uh, probably late '90s or early 2000s gangster rap. Yeah. Okay, Alex. Back to you. Yeah. Really, what what are you really listening to when you? What's your music preference? 
Uh, I like to, when I work out or, or rolling, I like the Wu-Tang. Okay. I'm going to go to Alex with this one. What's the most annoying thing that coaches do? Most annoying coach. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to James. James, because you're the coach. I got one for you. Uh, I'm sorry, James. James, what's the most annoying thing that coaches do? Or what Alex does? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one. I'm going to come back to you. Uh, Alex, what's the most annoying thing that students do? Yeah, but. <laughs> That's me. I've mentioned that before. That's I'm that guy. Like, yeah, I can't do that because my nah, yeah, but I can't do that. My back hurts. Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, just fucking do it the way I just told you, and it's not gonna hurt. And, <laughs> and then I yeah. do it in there, right? Yeah. Um, or, or or even like just uh, not following in like super basic instruction. That's me too. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was me. I always had like no. I just saw a video coach. Dude. I I saw. I was watching YouTube last night. This is the way you do it. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go again. We'll go around the horn on this one. Uh, Brian, what would you be doing if you hadn't have found martial arts? Is there another sport you would be doing? I know you're a businessman, but what would you be doing if you hadn't found martial arts? Eating and I'd be a sloppy motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what would you be doing? You're the coach. You're the jujitsu is the business other than raised by lions. But what would you be doing if you hadn't have found martial arts? Uh, that's impossible. It's in my blood. Dog. There you go. Okay. <laughs> living, but, in a, but, living, uh, living in a box under a bridge. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. you, uh, do you surf? Oh, surfing more. So you're a surfer now? Yes. Very cool. Um, James, do you watch a lot of like jujitsu videos online? Are you like an instructional guy or like watching Instagrams and like getting those one minute moves in? Are you that guy? No, no, I, I was when I started, but yeah, you know, the more jujitsu I do, the more I actually get a little turned off when I see that stuff going through my feet. I'm yeah. like, ugh, because you know, we're, we're around jujitsu all the time. We're training all the time. So I, I don't need when when I'm not at the school, when I'm not at Alex's school, I want to spend time with my family. I want I to hang you. out with them, do other stuff. When know? I'm not doing jujitsu, I want more jujitsu. Um, <laughs> uh, did you just you recently, James? You recently got your purple belt. Uh, about a year ago. Oh, it's yeah. been about a year. Okay, Fairly I think recent, I feel, I feel yeah. like I saw the the picture, or or I guess one of the pictures you sent me was one with your promotion. Okay, so I assumed that it was recent. Yeah. Um. Favorite competitors to watch, Brian? Do you are you somebody that watches stuff online or like did you guys watch yeah. ADC, ADCC and CG and, and CJI? Yeah, I'd say the Rotolo brothers and the Tacky brothers. You guys ever get to? I mean, those are are those locals in uh, in Cali where you are? I love the yeah, Rotolo brothers. I mean, come on, man, they're crazy. You see them on the, on the waves. In the waves. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh you, yeah, you do, Alex. You see them out there on the water? Yeah, they get they get out there. They yeah. get down. Yeah. I'm going to Costa Rica to do uh, I guess a BJJ retreat next month. I know that I know they built that gym. And they built that gym there. I mean, I'm I'm just going for the four days for the retreat, and I got to get back because because we're going to be launching. We're, we're going to be having just launched Academy Save, so it's a it's like actually a bad time to go. But I got my ticket, so I'm going to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, they built their academy down there. That's fucking. They, I, did they do that? They did that just so they can go surfing down there too, right? Pretty much. Maybe the the girls in surfing. Maybe like the girls and surfing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, I can't go from the girls, but. Yeah. Um, so did you guys who, did, can anybody chime in on, uh, on CJI and ADCC, which like, which one did you watch and which one did you watch recorded? We actually went to both. Did you guys go? Oh, you went? Yeah. We yeah. Went. Wow. We had some badass seats too. Yeah. So yeah, it was dope. I would say what? CGI was more engaging. Like it's like watching a movie where you're like tuned in hundred percent for me. ADCC, obviously, we've been going. We've actually been going for the last several years, the last three years or so, and uh, it's it's a bit like uh, there's a lot going on. So like you know, you're watching one match, then you got to switch to another. So then you hear like yeah. whoa, and then you. So, but it's for for me, CGI was like one of the dopest like formats ever. Alex, CGI was uh, was dope. Yeah, super super good. So, James, what do you uh, think? Same. Uh, ADCC is like sensory overload. There's just, there's too much shit going on. Yeah. But CJI was dope. Cause I mean, I'll say we just, we just fucking snuck down all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had, we had a uh, great seats, like Brian said. So, and we didn't, we didn't get up because we knew if we got up, we wouldn't be able to get those seats back. 
So we just stayed yeah. planted and, and fucking saw everything. I think, well, I think, I think Craig changed the game. And I just, I know I shared something to one of the, the stories on one of our pages um, that Mo is saying that they're going to do something in a smaller venue, more intimate, mm-hmm. like not so many mats going. Uh, and, and Craig's like, Hey, Greg, I wonder where you got that idea. You know, <laughs> uh, I love the alley though. The, the alley was, was the thing for me, the alley, you know, it stopped the ref, you know, the, there's no uh, ref interruptions. Right. You, you, it, sure. it was almost kind of in some cases like you're kind of using it as a weapon, but you can't grab it like the cage. Like, right. It was like where you know, this has been this is perfect. I mean, you know, hats off to karate combat. I, I wonder if somebody has a trademark on that. Like, did somebody mm-hmm. like like is that does somebody own that? Like kind of like the UFC like owns the octagon. That, 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 right. Yeah. So like, I wonder if somebody's got the alley. Oh, shit. Get on that, Brian. We got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, right like that I, I know somebody's got like if somebody has got that whatever you would i guess trademark on it or patent on that that would yeah. be amazing that's amazing for them because i think that just changed the jiu-jitsu game and i think that we should be seeing more of that uh, i know and, like the, and you know oh I'm sorry. no no no, no. Sorry. go ahead go ahead please i was gonna say and, and you know even for like these these big tournaments like adcc the everybody wants to win so like the the actual fight get really interesting but when everyone wants to win and there's a million dollar on the line, like uh, mm-hmm. you could see the difference at CJI. Like, you know, I've been watching terms forever and a lot of events and th- CJI made it a whole nut. Like people were fighting harder, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. like it was dope. You I, know? Think, I, I think they absolutely changed the game. I hope that they're the ones that wind up like really taking this further. I hope that they can become a bigger organization. Um, sure. I think that people, a lot of people are going to follow suit and, We've seen a lot of like little, you know, tournaments and things pop up. I think this is not not the million dollar part because that's the hard part, right? But the alley, the way that it's set up, the way that the venue is set up to watch it and you can see in. I think all that stuff was amazing. I think that that that's going to be the new way. Um, I would love for like I, I I've been watch I watched one FC. I just watch the jujitsu stuff and then I'll cut out, you know. So if they do any jujitsu, I'm usually just like tuning in for the jujitsu or watch it recorded and just fast forward to the jujitsu. But I think they're onto something. Even I think like the one F the one FC matches are the fact that they're the ten minutes, like it's ten minutes and it's like I think it's boring. Yeah. yeah. This was the most exciting jujitsu that I think I've seen. So um all right, I got a couple two more questions for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to Alice. Alice is the gym owner. What's your ultimate goal in jujitsu? What What do you want your legacy to be? Ah, uh, it's a deep one. A deep one, yeah, that it is. Uh, to to jujitsu is the tool, and it, it, it's it's the tool that we use to kind of like impact people's lives. So as many lives as we we can, uh, come along people's journeys and and do some special and kind of uh help them reach their goals or 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 help them reach things that they didn't think they could do prior. So that's awesome. Change lives. I love it. All right. The very last question. I, everyone's going to answer this one. Do you, or do you not wash your jujitsu belt? Brian. No, no. Alex. Every one, like once uh, a year. <laughs> Alex. I, I wash it. I do. Regularly. What? Regularly. Like, after class, like, or once a week, once a month, or like every day? Probably like, probably like once a month. Okay. James. I do, I do mostly no gi, so, okay. you know, fuck the belt. <laughs> yeah. The belt means nothing. So, Brian's, Brian's the only stinky one here, so. <laughs> yeah. now, he don't wash his underwear. <laughs> I, for the record, I've washed my black belt since I got in December once. I just washed it, but I do spray it with Lysol or I use this thing, a neutral zone clean, like a spray. I'll spray it. So I don't just leave it or like put it out in the sun. Like I know people do that. So I spray it, but every other belt I've ever had, other than white belt, every belt I had, I had two. So I just throw one in the wash and throw the other one in the bag for the next training session. You know, like, so I just threw it in. It didn't become an issue till we, till we started the podcast. I had a black belt friend that was on the podcast with us all the time. And he used to just fuck with me that, you know, about washing it. And then we started to learn about why the different reasons why people don't wash it. And then it just kind of became an ongoing joke. And, uh, but it's funny how everybody, like you smile, Brian, like, you know, you know, you tell people I don't wash my belt. 
you know, you're a, you're a stinky bastard, right? You know, so, you know so, and I'm just kidding. I just kidding. Just like the little little Lysol or here, like uh, these are the wipes from Neutral Zone Clean. I love these guys. I actually host their website too. On uh, my marketing company built their website, but they have a spray. So I just I hang it up on the shower curtain on the shower rod, and I just spray it, and I leave it there for a day till it dries. You know, that's nice. the way I get away with it. But you know, so don't want to spread the Rona. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, let me give it. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you guys. I wish you guys were here. I lo can't wait till you guys come down to Florida. We'll do it again. It, it's a different vibe when everybody's here. Um, I want to give you an opportunity, each of you. Um, you any shout outs, anybody that you want to, you know, any mentions, uh, you know, uh, give everybody the, the handle for, for Raised by Lions. I'll give you a moment to do that. If everybody wants to say something, go ahead. Yeah, if I can start real quick. First of all, thank you to uh, you, Milton, for hosting us and uh, allowing us um, this platform to be able to, you know, just one chat with you about jujitsu and just nerd it out on jujitsu, but also an opportunity for us to, you know, get some brand exposure for Raised by Lions Coffee. Um, for anybody that's interested in getting some some real specialty coffee, uh, we, we do the daily roasting here in Southern California, and we, we only source, the, you know, the best and baddest beans. And uh, the, our website is raisedbylionscoffeeroasters.com. Again, raisedbylionscoffeeroasters.com. Our Instagram handle is raisedbylionscoffee. And uh, yeah, man, we just appreciate everything you're doing and, and you, all man. the stuff you're doing. Academy Safe and all that stuff. You know, we know it's going to kill it. And uh, yeah, we, we were just appreciative of you having us on. Thank you. Thank you, man. Alex, anything you want to say? Yeah, sure. Uh, th thank you. S same thing. Uh, thank you for having us on, Milton. Uh, and everything you mentioned about your projects is, is actually really cool and interesting. So good luck with all of that. Thank you. And then uh, for us, if anyone, if you're looking for jujitsu here in North Orange County, uh, or in Garden Grove specifically, Gracie Baja Garden Grove. All right, James. Um, yeah. So I also wanted to add in, like, we, our brick and mortar store is in Tustin. So if you're in the Orange County or Southern California area, or you're going to happen to pass through, or you're in town for a jujitsu tournament, and you want to support a coffee shop owned by you know guys who like to do jujitsu just like you uh feel free to stop in uh let us know we'll take care of you we're off of uh red hill and edinger in tustin between the 5 and 55 freeway unlock the power of your online presence with black belt digital marketing their reputation management program ensures your google business profile seen by more potential customers Black Belt Digital Marketing is your full-service digital marketing agency specializing in local SEO and reputation management. Boost your business today. Visit bbdigitalmarketing.com. Your success is their priority. Special thank you to the crew over at Flow & Roll for all their support. Flow & Roll is renowned for their incredible nogi rash guards, shorts, and leggings. Flow & Roll has quickly become the premier custom apparel provider for academies big and small throughout the United States. Reach out today to discuss your custom order and ask about their incredible pre-order program. You can send an email to flowenroll at gmail.com or visit their Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll and shoot them a direct message. And yes, they can create an awesome custom gi for your academy as well. Visit flowenroll.com to check out their awesome designs. And remember, you'll get 20% off your purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. All right, guys, listen again. Listen, I want to have you hang out for a second because we're going to take a couple of pictures against this uh, for promo against the TV. We'll put you here. And uh, Christian's going to come over and take some pictures. Let me just give a couple of quick shout outs. This is real short. Uh, shout out to BioPro, BioProteinTech.com. You get $30 off with code JJD. Uh, the Jiu Jitsu Box is back. Uh, they're sponsoring the show and working with us on Academy Safe as well. Um, you can check them out at TheBJJBox.com and you get 20% off your first order with code JJD20. I was not saying off of your first order for the last couple of shows, so sorry about that, everybody. Um, check us out at Jujitsu Dummies for all the ways to watch, listen, and support. My personal IG is Uncle uh, Uncle Milty BJJ, and um, that's it. Thank you for watching, everybody. Peace, love, Jujitsu. Whoosh.